Cause if anyone's watching, let them keep talking and talking. Avalanche, start that avalanche. Well, hello, greetings, and welcome from here in uh, the northern part of the Sunshine State of Florida. We are just outside uh, the city of Quincy in the count in Gadsden County, in the uh, Florida Panhandle, Lake Thirty Eight, the site, and it is the Lake Thirty Eight Pro Am competition being presented to you by S Lines. Our schedule of the day features the women's and men's slalom final. And uh, a good shot of our uh, facility here, a beautifully uh, manicured uh, lakeside. And uh, there you see a good view from our, uh, from our aerial uh, photographer, uh, Connor Pauly, as he makes his way down the lake with his, uh, with his drone shot. And uh, yes, indeed, a greetings one and all, wherever you happen to be tuning in from, uh, from all points around the world. I am... Uh, Tony Lightfoot, and it's uh, glad and a pleasure to to have you on board. So, uh, we've got the women's slalom coming up in about 10 or so minutes. And uh, before we uh, get that uh, situated, we're going to... Uh, going to get with a few of our uh, skiers uh, find out uh, what their thoughts are going in and uh, for the for the first time today let's uh, send it over to uh, my good uh, good friend and compadre mr zane nicholson how are you doing this morning yeah tony here with uh Lice bagnoli our first skier in this uh, open women's slalom event um had a good day yesterday got a little better from round one to round two um you know looking to improve that score today uh, as our first competitor you know what are we looking at uh, as 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 uh, first skier off the dock. Yeah, so as you just said, first skier off the dock, so I'm not going to know the score uh, for the final. Um, so no pressure about that. I'm going to go out there and try my best and hopefully learn from the mistakes of yesterday. Yeah, and so, I mean, yesterday you had good. You built off of it, and so we're looking to see it. I, I, you know, you've been taking down that 11-meter pass, so uh, I hope you get it this morning. Yeah, the goal is to run 38, so all the final score is going to be a good finals. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, we'll hope to see you do it here in just a minute. Back to you guys. All right, then. Thank you very much. And uh, we're going to take a quick look at that running order. Alicia Bagnoli uh, on the dock and getting ready to go out first, followed by a quartet of skiers from the United States, uh, starting off with Ali Garcia, then continuing on with Ali Nicholson, Elizabeth Montavon and Chelsea Mills. We'll round off uh, the list with uh, Luisa Jaramillo from Colombia, and then we'll go on to Regina Jaquis and then finally Whitney mcclintock Rini. So eight skiers uh, to go in the women's slalom final. And uh, after the conclusion of that event, we will go into the men's slalom final. Your defending champion uh, from, uh, from, the, uh, from the previous season is Regina Jaquis. So uh, she'll be looking to defend that title against all other challengers. So... Uh, the uh, the temperature, wind speed, uh, you see up there on the screen, screen, it's a balmy 75 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees C. Uh, wind speed about 5 mile an hour, although it has been known to gust up uh, uh, quite significantly during the course of uh, some skiers' performances. But we'll uh, keep an eye on that and uh, keep you entertained uh, for the next few hours. This is the 2023 Lake 38 Pro-Am presented to you by S-Lines with our island uh, being provided to you by Good. The dockside interviews provided by Stokes. And of course, as ever, we are presented to you by S-Lines. We will be back in the next few moments. So sit tight. We've got a lot of uh, great skiing action to come right after this.
My name is Thomas De Gasperi. I'm from Italy. I'm a two-time World Slalom Champion. I've been coming here at La Guapa for four years now. The condition of this villa, it's top level. I would say five stars plus. Everybody is very friendly. The hosts are amazing. The staff is always helpful. There's always food on the table. I couldn't ask for anything more. Conditions, clean, and we're only an hour away from Mexico City, so it's it's very close and convenient for to travel. Every time I come here, I feel like I'm, I'm at home. I've been a fan of Marcus Brown since I was like 13 years old. He's, you know, been my, my childhood hero. And so for him to offer something like this, you know, which is, which is, it's great, not just for me, but it's great for water skis to have something like this where people can really get a bespoke water ski experience. It's going to improve their skiing, their, their body, you know, and Jenny's just, she's amazing too. So just to have the access to, to both of those guys, I think it's huge. And it has been massive just to talk things through and to get a new understanding of, of stuff I haven't tried yet. All right, uh, back here at the Lake 38 uh, uh, Pro-Am, uh, coming to you courtesy of S-Lines. Glad to have the pleasure of your company. Uh, in the next few minutes, we are going to start our uh, women's slalom final. You see there, Alicia Bagnoli on, uh, on dock side there, and we're going to get a good look at her as uh, she prepares uh, to do battle out there on the slalom course. She scored 5 11.25 minutes, looking for something a little bit more than that. And with that in mind, let's check in with Zane. Yeah, here with Louisa Yarmillo. Had a PB yesterday. Um, so looking to, 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 you know, do that or, or better it today, right? Yeah, the weather looks nice. There's definitely a head tail, so I'm excited. Yeah, so um, we know we saw you yesterday. You got around that, uh, that three ball at 39, so... Um, you know, that bettered your, was that a PB for you by, by half a buoy? Yes. So, um, well, hopefully today we'll, we'll see you get further down it. And, um, you know, if needed, she'll hit that coveted S turn that she missed yesterday, right? Yeah, I'm excited. But it's also, like, good to get excited once in a while, you know? And, yeah. Yeah, and so, uh, well, we look forward to seeing you here in a little bit. And uh, we'll go back to you, Tony. Thank you very much indeed as uh, we, uh, we continue to take a, a good look at the, uh, the site here at Lake 38, which, is, uh, which isn't too far away from Florida's state capital of uh, Tallahassee, an absolutely beautiful place that is, you know, uh, the, uh, so far as the state capitals go, and I've been to a few of them across the nation, and there aren't that many that, uh, that rival uh, Tallahassee so far as its uh, beauty and uh, in its... Uh, uh, in its tidiness uh, so to speak that's that's the one thing that kind of uh, stood out for me uh, whenever we uh, traveled in and out there along uh, the the main thoroughfare of Monroe Street uh, to make it out here at uh, Lake 38 which is uh, just a uh, hop skip and a jump away from uh, from Quincy which is the county seat of uh, Gadsden County here in the northern part of Florida and uh, 
I get the sense uh, people around here are, are quite upbeat, especially after uh, the Florida State University uh, Lady Knowles uh, uh, did the business uh, last night in their uh, in their softball bracket, in the winners bracket. They took down Washington uh, to the tune of a three to one, and they'll be in the winners bracket all the way through to the end of their. Uh, their bracket in the College uh, World Series uh, that's taking place over in Oklahoma City right now. So uh, we wish uh, the Lady Knowles the best of luck uh, going through with that. See a few of our uh, competitors uh, getting ready in uh, in various forms. And uh, the the men will be uh, coming up uh, uh, very shortly after the conclusion of the event. Uh, we're going to take a... Should take a quick look at the uh, the running order again. Uh, it will feature Alicia Bagnoli. Uh, she would be taken to the uh, to the water first, followed by Ali Garcia. There you see the running order, followed by Ali Nicholson. Elizabeth Montavon is uh, fourth out, followed by uh, Chelsea Mills, then Luisa Jaramillo, uh, Regina Jaquist, and finally Whitney mcclintock Reaney. And uh, interesting to note that uh, the Regina Jaquist and the Whitney mcclintock Reaney both in a perfect tie right now, as each of them scored a two at 10.25 meters in each of the first two rounds yesterday so good to see that and uh, we will uh, we'll see uh, who prevails in this eight women's final thank you boat drivers getting installed into the boat there's mario pagazzi out of the dominican republic uh, good to see him and uh, he'll be uh, taking the helm in the red baron uh, between now and uh, the end of the women's slalom, uh, the the women's uh, the men's slalom event will be driven by Keith Holberton, as he has been doing in the pre previous two rounds. So, just waiting on the green light from our officials uh, to make the uh, to make those two uh, necessary passes uh, to uh, to set the slalom course on an equal footing with all of the skiers. The, uh, the simulation pass, as it's called. Licia Bagnoli, nervous moments for her. We will see what she will do with uh, with this performance in the final round. All right, so Maria Pagosi there in the uh, in the logo uh, sun uh, long sleeve uh, hoodie which uh, the folks here can uh, can purchase uh, courtesy of Splash Threads. And also, uh, go vote for your skier of the day. Go to waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play. And the winner of the, uh, of the vote for skier of the day will get this prize right here. It is the commemorative uh, plate, which is uh, uh, produced by uh, Michael Madour. And uh, we, we certainly appreciate his contributions uh, to... Uh, to the tour events that uh, TWBC uh, has been privileged uh, to uh, to present. And uh, this little trophy here, courtesy of Michael Madora and also sponsored by 2U Nutritional Snacks, will go to the skier that garners the most votes in our uh, skier of the day poll. You can go to waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash vote to be a part of that deal. So... In the brand leaderboard, uh, we've got Syndicate still in the lead on 154, D3 on 146, and Good in third, 116 in third place for Good. All right then, so, and uh, sneaking in, as he tends to do, is uh, Robert Hazelwood from Team Syndicate. How are you doing? I've never been very good at sneaking. To be <laughs> You're very, very I'm sneaky. doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you, Tony. How are you today? I am doing good. I'm doing good. You, you, you sound a little bit subdued this morning. You subdued? I've coughed up, breakfasted up. I'm ready to, ready to rock and roll on the day, Tony. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, continuing to do the uh, the uh, the video blog for uh, for HO Skis, HO uh, Syndicate. He's got his camera and he's got his microphone Always. there. And, Always uh, check go, it out, HO and, uh, Sports YouTube channel. Yes, blog. indeed. Go to HO Sports YouTube channel, and uh, you'll be able to see that this vlog episode in about a couple of days. Usually, yeah. I try to get it out by kind of the start of the next weekend um but we have a very busy week this week we have our ho photo shoot this week so hopefully we'll still manage to get it out by thursday or friday but um i have a fun week ahead sounds good sounds good and uh with that in mind let's uh, let's concentrate now on the action on the water our first competitor out coming to us out of uh, milano in italia it is alicia bagnoli yeah, she skied. She she does well under pressure, Alice. I feel like yesterday she was mega nervous. Obviously, she had to get to the five to make it into this final. She was kind of nervous about the wind. She was asking a lot of questions. And um, the good thing is, you can see her just go out there and dominate. You know, she does. I feel like Alice is one of the strongest in some pretty high pressure situations. When she knows she needs to get it done, she usually gets it done. So um, she obviously got it done yesterday. Ended up getting the five at 38. And um, here she is today, the first one off in our final. All right, Sin. So, Alicia Bagnoli. We'll see what she can conjure up. Has been into 39 and a half off on a number of occasions. Her personal best is three, which ties the Italian national slalom record, which is uh, held between herself and uh, Irene Reinstaller. Okay, so today um, for both the the men and the women, the start speeds will remain the same. It's going to be 32 for the men and obviously for the women. It is going to be 28 off. It's nice with this wind. Um, it gives us just a little bit of room to play with. The wind's not um, it's not going to become a problem. It's just going to be more of a more of a strategic kind of kind of thing. It's going to be a pretty stiff tailwind for the for the girls who decide to take maybe the 38 in the tail, but it's going to give a pretty nice advantage for that head breeze on the way back in. So, um, yeah, it's nothing too crazy, but it's going to make that tailwind pass just a little more challenging if you decide to take the 38 for the women or the 39 for the men. Um, and Aliche deciding to go with 32 here today. So she's obviously looking for that 38 headwind. But here you see, you see just those... Those little gusts coming on that gate. I don't know if that's shadows on the screen right now, or I'm just imagining it. Um, but there's just, it's going to be similar to yesterday. It can be a little bit up and down. And definitely scores for, um, it's the weather conditions for big scores, but it's going to make that, um, that second last pass a little more challenging. All right, let's rock and roll. First gear out. Licia Bagnoli taking a calculated risk here by going in at 32 off or 13 meters. See what she's got with the entrance gates. Nice turn off buoy number one. Beautiful skiing here for this 32. Lovely and early. What I really like about this pass is she's moving off that second wake incredibly well. It can be a little bit of a, a challenge when you're going out at that. As she, used, she usually goes out at 28. Um, so it can be a little bit... It, oh, we are going to head to the dock to Zane. Indeed. All right, here with Ali Nicholson. Um... Had a consistent day yesterday with one and a half 39. Uh, looking to better that score today, I, I would assume. Yeah, definitely looking for more. Um, got a few things I'm going to try to think about, uh, but we're just going to take it a pass at a time, try to manage the wind, and hopefully put a big score up early. Good. Well, uh, uh, you know, saw you get one and a half 39, so looking to hold on there, maybe get down 39. Been having some cracks at it this past week, eh? Yeah, yeah, practice has been going well. Uh, yesterday just was a little bit unfortunate at two ball, especially in the second round. So, yeah, definitely going to try to hold on and get a little bit more today. Well, conditions are looking pretty good. A little bit of headwind here, so uh, we look forward to seeing you in just a little bit. Back to you, Tony. And uh, and Ali Nicholson holding the fort a little bit uh, for Team Syndicate in the uh, the brand leaderboard, uh, the, uh, mm -hmm. the only member of that three-person team in the brand leaderboard uh, uh, competition to be representing Syndicate. The other two members would be Will Asher and uh, Jamie Ball. Yeah, they would be. She's holding one out for the fort. Um, so let's see. But here we go. We have Alice Magnoli coming in 35, 12 meters. A little bit of a narrow start on that gate. Obviously trying to be a bit cautious with the tailwind. Um, but she's back in it here. 
Again, that tailwind just pushing her down course, but she's handling it incredibly well. Oh, a little bit offsided at that five ball, but she is all good to go. Yeah, that gate's going to be, that gate down that far end is for sure going to be one of the biggest challenges today, I think. Because um, it comes over those trees and it kind of, it, I think we talked about it yesterday, but it, it depends goes on. Goes up and then goes down. Yeah, it just depends on when it goes down. And obviously we see it on the, you see it on the, your, on the lake after it's going to hit your body. So it's really hard to know kind of where it's going to hit you and where to time it. And I think maybe she was just a little bit cautious there. Because um, even though it is a, a, a stiff tail breeze, it, uh, it isn't going to maybe hit you as much as you think it's going to do. So it'll be interesting to see how the people deal with that today. Um, but other than that five ball, that was a pretty textbook pass there. Uh, nice and balanced over those feet. Just maybe, a lot of people hate the word, but maybe safety turned that five ball a little bit. Um, and didn't do a very good job, <laughs> job of it there. But here she is, early to six. It's 35. She's through it. Not quite the money pass, but definitely the um, the buy-in for the money pass here. 38. Yeah. It's a challenge of a pass. A lot of these uh, a lot of these ladies make it look real easy, but not an easy pass out there. But she has a lovely head breeze. Let's see what she can put together on this 38 off 11 meter line length. It's all going to be dependent upon the start here for Alicia Bagnoli, and it looks like it's a pretty darn good gate shot. Oh, she just set for the turn. It. Interesting. I didn't really get a chance to see quite what happened there. I don't. If, I don't know if that gate was maybe a little bit slow, um, or she just tried to kill it on that one ball. But let's. Hopefully, Vince is going to rack up that replay. There we go. Yeah, maybe just a touch slow, just super tight line. Couldn't quite get the ski around. Um, ends up just a little bit straight into that one ball. But again, it's. I, I, we talk about it a lot here. The gates are a little bit uh, different. Um, they're on the shorter side, so the gates are going to be a big, uh, a big part of today's today's running. But yeah, just getting a little bit slow there. See, she's barely getting a ski run by the whitewash, um, so she has load on that back shoulder, but not really any speed or angle, uh, which is kind of not the mix that you want to see. And that's there's Ali Garcia there, very flagrant with her arms. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, she's got the music on. She's going for the Pado font vibes. Yeah, she yeah she was going. Right, she I don't know was, what they uh, do on Hancock, but they love the headphones. That late. Oh, she was going. She you was rocking there, to David them. Getter yesterday. Oh, she rocks to everything. David Getter and Rihanna. Look at that. I know you want to ski better, but it's nice having you on the dock, Ali. I like you on the dock. We were just having the conversation yesterday about this how there's mics everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit like that cool-down room that they have at the end of each race in F1, you know, where, yeah. the, where the guys were uh, are deep in the weeds with conversation on how they drove. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's just but we're all scared now. We don't trust Vince anymore. He's going to put out there when we're saying something dodgy, so we, we're all very polite now on the dog. <laughs> all righty, there is Mario not, not Pagosi in the driver's seat, one of the best drivers in the world. Yes, indeed. Um, out there doing his thing, and you can see that scores yesterday. That women's fi the women's round, well, one and two yesterday. But I mean, I feel like we've got to mention that that finish from Regina and Whitney yesterday. I mean, the the times that you see the the women get to two at forty one aren't huge as it is, but to see both of them turn it and Regina trying to kill herself to get there, and Whitney getting centimeters away. Sorry, I'm in I'm in America now. I guess inches away. Um, yeah. She yeah, yeah but she's Canadian. Yeah, she's Canadian, but American oh, listeners. See, I'm, I'm in tune with my viewership, Tony. Yeah. Um, all right, so next up we have Ali Nicholson. And let's see, you see the Pro Tour leaderboard there on the left. Whitney in first place, Regina in second, Jamie Bull in third. And without Jamie Bull here this weekend, is someone going to take that opportunity to overtake um, and find their way onto that podium? We will find out in about, I guess, 45 minutes. Yeah, but, indeed. But here, a lot of a uh, lot of talking points are going forward as we await our next gear to make our way in towards the slalom course. Coming to us out of Horizon West in Central Florida, this is Ali Garcia. Here yeah, a smooth looking gate, thirteen meters again. A lot of these ladies are going to be looking for that thirty-eight headwind. She had a little bit of a bobble in that round one, yes, uh, round two yesterday. Um, but let's hope she's got that out of her head and looking like a very slick 
32 there. All right, then. Having seen Ali Garcia uh, make it through 30 metres, let's have a check-in with Zane Nicholson. Guys, I'm here with uh, Elizabeth Montavon. Big day yesterday. Got 239. So looking to replicate that again today. That'd be great. You know, um, I didn't really have a season last season, and this tournament has felt like progress for me. So I know what I want to work on today. I'm just going to see what I can do out there. I know it's a little bit windy, but that's the time to work on stuff. Yeah, and so I mean, we know you had a little bit of a back injury earlier in the season, so the back seems to be feeling better, and uh, hopefully we, we we see you go put out a big score today. Thank you. Yeah, back's holding up, and I'm here, and I'm happy. Cool. Well, uh, back to you, Tony. All right, then. Thanks a lot, and uh, uh, nice to see uh, Zane Nicholson uh, wearing uh, wearing one of those uh, those uh, those famous uh, uh, TWBC uh, shirts. I thought you were going to say one of his wigs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He's been he's been trying out to some some different hairstyles. Yeah, I, I don't know if you, they run out of hair dye, but if the the, the no, blonde, we're, we're the bl- convinced that it's just plain Clorox. The blonde, the <laughs> the blonde, um, the blonde hair and brown eyebrows is definitely a vibe. But here we go. We have Ali Garcia coming in thirty five off. A little bit of a tail breeze. Let's see how she manages that gate. Nice and fast. Maybe a little too fast. But here we go. Pulled oh, really long into number one there. and safe out of that one, but she is back in it. Her offside is absolutely money. Um, let's see how she deals with this four ball. A little on the tail, but she is fine. And she is through that 35. I think that one ball was kind of just reminiscent of yesterday. Um, it's real tough um, to kind of forget something like that. Obviously, getting that half at 35, well, one at 35 yesterday really kind of worked a little bit. Um, so it's with a fast gate like that, it can kind of be a little bit unsettling when you remember what you just did yesterday, but dealing with it well, um, and that is hopefully it out of her mind, ready to rumble, see the wind speed there, eight mile an hour. Again, I'm dubious of Vince's machine, but, um, but I just like to give him stick. Yes. And you do, (laughs) and you do so on a regular basis, but there you go. So... All right, here we see Ali coming back through that 35. Obviously not the greatest start, but smoking it through the end of that pass. And I think that's going to be one of those things that I think experience is really going to play a key in today with these gates. You see her going probably the right route, going a little bit faster on that tailwind. You're always better to maybe be a touch fast on those gates and have to kind of scrub speed than be super slow and end up just fast and direct at that one ball. Um, This water is warm and slippy, so... Getting that speed can be a challenge, but here we go. See a little bit of a gust up on that gate, but let's see if she can deal with it. Nice, strong. Pull out. 11 meters, 38. Plenty of speed on that gate. Come on, Alan. Let's see a good start. Oh, oh big one. Stalls up on one. Exactly the same thing that kind of happened to, to Aliche. I have no idea. Really, I mean, very similar one balls on all of her passes, actually. Um, that's, that's a real bummer for Ali there, but... Um, She's going to come back. She will be She will be in Europe, so she's going to look, be looking um, to host a little bit of a comeback later on in the season. But here we go. Just didn't look that no. bad. I think just lost her hips and, um, yeah, just didn't, didn't quite get on that edge. But, uh, yeah, that, that sucks. Just so, not quite confident. She was fast. You see a little bit of loose line on that gate, so probably a little too fast late on that gate. She's straight through the middle of them, um, and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to we're gonna have to work on a little bit of fortitude there for Mally. But hey, indeed. Um, let's head to Zane and see who he has. Hey guys, here with Chelsea Mills. Uh, have a good good ski set yesterday. Um, I know you're coming back from an ankle injury, um, so it's good to see you put out a big score like you did yesterday. Thanks. Yeah, I know it's going to take a bit more today to uh, get on the podium. So I am super thankful to be here and have the opportunity to compete. And um, I'm just going to be aggressive and relentless and, you know, I'm going to give it my all. Yeah, I mean, in this win, that's what that's what it's going to take. You're going to have to be a little bit aggressive and, uh, you know, we got a good headwind coming into the dock. So uh, that should be playing a factor today a little bit. Yeah, definitely uh, the wind is is up a bit right now. So it'll be interesting to see some of the line like selections that the competitors choose. Um, I don't expect anything different from Whitney and Regina, but I'll be interested to see what the other girls do, and I may be watching for that to see what's working and what's not working. Cool. Well, uh, well, we look forward to, to seeing you out there in just a little bit, and uh, back to you guys. 
All right, then continuing right along, uh, we just saw Ali Garcia get one at 11.25 meters. Not going to be anywhere close to her best score on this site uh, uh, 12 months ago, uh, where she scored half at 10.75 meters, and uh, in uh, the uh, the second round. But uh, we'll see if we can pick up the pace a little bit with our next competitor. She comes to us originally out of Gallatin in Tennessee, and. Uh, and lives these days uh, uh, closer to the hub of uh, tournament water skiing in this part of the world, Central Florida. It is none other than Ali Nicholson. Yeah, I ski with Ali Nicholson a lot out at, um, at Jack Travers, and um, she she's been she's been smoking it this year. She's been she's been putting up some big scores in practice, and just she's she's been in those finals. She's been deep in deep deep in these final tournaments but she's not quite put together that big run that she wants i know she wants to make it through that 39 that's that's kind of a massive goal for her right now um so let's see if she can put that together she's going to be going at a 32 off um i think that's a good call for now but let's see a little bit slow on that gate good one ball um super early to that two lovely and balanced as she moves down this pass and just really Ali doing what Ali does best, getting stacked, aligned, and just making it look pretty, pretty easy. Let's go to Zane's world and see, um, see who he has. Indeed. Hey, with Ali Garcia, um, going down a little bit early there at, at that 38 off pass. Uh, you know, tell us what was going on out there. Um, it's, you know, it's a little bit different conditions today. It's definitely quite a bit windier than we had yesterday. Um, it's hard to tell from the dock, but it caught me off guard a little bit, but I, I knew it was going to happen and just wasn't strong enough. Uh, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't pretty disappointed, but first final of the season, so hopefully we can just build on that. Well, yeah, and I mean, that is, at least you got something to build on going in, you know, or you, you're going to Europe and, and hitting the tour stops there. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really excited for the tour this season. Uh, some couple new stops, so it should be a lot of fun. Cool. We look forward to seeing you further on in the season, and uh, we'll head back to you guys. All right. So no, that, uh, thanks that, a lot there, Ali Garcia. A drone, just drones and drones. <laughs> yeah, they're everywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's uh, she. She's dealt with that really well. Um, and that's the big thing about getting experience. Is that was an experience for her out there today. It was windy. It was pretty strong. And um, good thing she's taken a lesson from that and hopefully can learn from that in the future. But here we see Ali Nicholson, a little bit more experienced than the other Ali. So beautiful one ball there. Um, nice little hook up out of two. A little bit now into three, but nothing too crazy. Good four ball. Beautiful five and a very, very, very well ran pass there by Ali Nicholson, I would say. Yes, absolutely. And uh, scored uh, one buoy at 10.75 meters in the round previous to this one. Scored as high as a three at this event, uh, at this venue. Actually, a four at this uh, venue. Yeah, no. At a 10.75 meters around about this time last season. Yeah, she knows she can ski well here. Um, she's very comfortable and incredibly good driver in the driver's seat. Beautiful conditions. Um, and like I say, Ali just does such a great job. You see here through that backside, no matter what happens, just look how aligned. You could draw a pencil line directly from her head through her feet and um, it'd just be dead straight beautiful positioning behind the boat um, and it just means that she's so strong and even if she makes that mistake she gets back to that position no matter what and um, and does just a fantastic job of getting across course but let's see here this 38 has been tripping tripping the first two skiers up so yeah. um, let's see let's see how she deals with it and even though she's an incredibly experienced and very very good competitor Probably the kind of thing that she's going to be watching. Like, oh, what's is there a hole at one ball? It's always just that little thought, that little evil thought at the back of your mind, kind of making you question what's going on. But let's see how she deals with that. And as she comes in here, 38 meters, sorry, 38 yeah. off, 11 meters. A little slow on that gate again. Round she, one. It's a beautiful one ball. She's got the lead at this point, but nice she wants two. a heck of a lot more than that to keep oh. the lead. Round number three. Very little loose narrow. off number four, but she manages to cruise off number five. A little bit of a safety check off five. Round number six. There you go. It's a six buoy count. It's the Ooh. new lead, and it belongs to Ali Nicholson. Thought we'd lost her at that three ball end. She was yeah. incredibly narrow in there. Um, yeah, that's not the biggest confidence building pass for her, but she's through that 38. She knows she's towards the deep end now um, and getting a beautiful one ball. 
you can see again that position coming in, pulling a touch along to two, but it was needed with that little bit of tip rise. A beautiful two ball, and here, not quite sure what happened, but thought she was going to go inside of it from that boat view. Don't really see it too well from there, but then just really running the rest of that pass. Nice and safe, nice and solid. Um, and yeah, not the best five ball, but she got it done. And pretty early to that six ball. It's one of those kind of passes at 38. Um, she knows she can run it 99% of the time, but it can it can weigh on you. Once you've got that pass out of the way, it's almost like a weight off your shoulders. And just a nice little relaxing. We see there Elizabeth Montavon on that dock waiting to rock and roll. Um, and seeing what she can put up there. This is the first 39 of the day here for Ali Nichols. She is going to want to be a long way down it, if not through it, if she wants a chance to be in that lead spot by the end of the day. Okay, 39 here off, 10 comes. 7 5. How's she going to do on this one ball? Oh, Beautiful one ball. One. Finally oh, gets the two she needs. Come on, Ali, keep on moving. Keeping the ski Big moving. Three, come on, keep on running. She's round oh. four to the wakes. And there you go, it's a four buoy count. Her best ever score here, uh, to the best of my recollection, and it's a uh, great skin there from Ali Nicholson. Incredibly good skin. She left it all out there for that last set. She had a one and a half, one and a half. She knew she just needed that two ball, and she got it. Um, incredibly good skin there from Ali. Like I say, stiff toe, and there's no guarantees um, on that thirty on that thirty nine today. But beautiful one ball, could not be better. And the two ball, I mean, really a little bit of tip rise, but angle straight away. Probably just got a little bit excited. She felt like she's been narrow at the three ball kind of for the whole set. Pulled a little long, got a little loose line, um, and kind of turned it just so she didn't have to ask turn, I think. so. Um, but incredible skiing there from Ali. That is going to be That's going to be a, be a tough one. That's, that's going to be a rough one. Um, it's up there. She's sitting pretty right now. I think she's got to be happy with that. Um, be interested to see if we can find her and have a word with her. But that's... That's kind of what she's been doing in practice. And, um, and yeah, incredible skiing there from Ali. Look at this view. Yeah, that, that just gives you a, a really, really good perspective on how wide she was on, some, on at least a couple of those yeah. turns to get her that far down. Yeah. So Ali Nicholson has the lead with four at 10, 7, 5 meters. Now, next competitor up from South Florida. This is Elizabeth Montavon. All right, she skied incredibly well this weekend, actually. Um, going out at 14. So, um, obviously thinking she can make that 38 tailwind and give her a good chance at the 39. Nice little start here. Very characteristic style of Elizabeth, just a little more on the back of the ski than the other ladies, but very similar to uh, um, Ali in that she's like super stacked, super tall. All right, back over to, uh, to Zane. All right, hey guys, here with Ali Nicholson. Big score there, 4 at 39. Um, how was it feeling out there? No, it felt pretty good. Um, I'm a buoy off of my PB. I just think I got to go. I'm you know, going to go back to the drawing board this week. I always want more. Happy with the score today. Um, happy to get you know, more than that one and a half. So uh, overall, pretty happy. Now we'll just see how the, how the rest of the girls shake out. Talk us through how that 39 felt. You had a really good one. And I know you've been going around two ball yesterday. So you're probably in the back of your mind thinking, you know, we got to get two, got to stay on the handle. But, but talk us through that after you had that big one. Yeah, I thought I had a pretty good one. I was, yeah, I was like, just please don't get another one and a half. Uh, I think I went a little long at three and just didn't trust it. Um, and yeah, then I just, I felt like I was kind of done it for. And I think I'm going to probably go back and watch that one and kick myself a little bit for not continuing on. Well, cool. Well, that's, that's still a big score. And uh, congratulations on, on being in the lead. And uh, we'll, we'll send it back to you guys. Indeed, that uh, proverbial Oliver Twist analogy, always wanting more. Yeah, and that's that's Sam skin. You can always there's always another boy. That's the unfortunate uh, curse that us Salamis have to live with. But um, let's see Elizabeth Montemont coming in here. 32 tailbreeze. A little bit shoulder heavy on that one ball, but um, I think what Elizabeth does incredibly well, very similar to Ali Nicholson, is that position there, right into that whitewash to whitewash. Super stacked over that ski. Super super tall. Um, yeah, and it's and she's looking good. Yes, yeah, certainly looking a lot better off the first couple of passes than she's uh, than she's done the the first uh, first couple of rounds, and that could bode well for her going forwards. As uh, we look uh, to uh, to take take a look at the instant replay, I I believe on that on that run, but we will uh, start to look at the instant replays on the next pass uh, for Elizabeth Montavon. The earlier two runs of twenty eight and thirty two off uh, should be 
pretty uh, elementary for her. But let's check in with Zane Nicholson. All right, hey guys, here with Gina Jaquist. Um, just saw a big score come out. You know, kind of what, what does that put in the mind for you going in with the, with the headwind coming off the dock? Winds a bit up and down. Yeah, it's up and down. Just going to have to do what we always do out there. Um, was stoked Allie got a good start and got out of two today, and uh, she needs to get down that course. That's what we expect from her. And um, so that kind of sets us up for the rest of the, the game here. So I'm excited. Well, I mean, if you're actually looking at it, conditions are looking like they're dying down a little bit, so hopefully it'll hold off. Yeah. And so you never know. I mean, it's up and down. It's supposed to be gusty, um, but, you know, that is part of the outdoor sport, and you just deal with it when you're out there and go from there. But I'm um, excited that we got scores already deep, deep down 39, so that's what we want. Cool. Well, good luck out there, Regina. We'll head back to you guys soon. Interesting. Elizabeth Montemont here, 35 off. Interesting just seeing there, C2 popping up on the screen. Don't see that many of those nowadays and especially not in the in the women's field I don't think I've seen C2 I don't know if that's a new move from her or um, or just for today this weekend whatever's going on there but um, yeah interesting take there from a little bit going C2 I do think it actually probably suits her style it does tend to suit her style uh, quite uh, quite better than uh, than for example, A2, where the uh, where the pull of the boat comes on the strongest and they're in a different place, and all taking a bit of a jolt there off buoy number yeah, one into number challenge. two. That's the challenge of C. She gets you. She gets yeah. you early. Um, yeah, but either way, not looking the smoothest. Thirty-five, um, maybe a little harsh, I guess. But um, she's through it. That's all that matters. Six is six. Just looking a little bit unbalanced right now out there. She's kind of falling a little bit left and right but she's getting the swing she's getting the positions just looking like she's not quite trusting herself through the back side of the turn so let's see if she can really trust that gate um she's got a lovely tail breeze going on right now i thought i heard her behind me there but she's down that far end she's gonna have a tailwind 38 she's gonna need to be aggressive she's gonna need to be confident um but if she can get through this she is gonna be set up for a beautiful 39 all righty let's see what she can do 11 to meters. Five meters. 38 off, a little bit on the tail on the gate, but getting the good one ball, that's the start that she needs. Once a good two, here we go, good start. She keeps it going out of three, come on. Beautiful four, she's just gonna need to get out of this five. And oh, she... and just on the back, on the back of the ski. Oh, that one's gonna sting, Tony. Yeah. That is gonna, that is gonna hurt. That was by far the best pass she's ran all day. Um, that was that was everything that I kind of talked about on that last pass. She stayed over her feet. She stayed super committed. Um, she just did everything right. And then just maybe got stuck a little bit back into that center line after four, which she kind of does anyway, but looked like it got to the point where it became a weakness uh, and just didn't get that drive out to five and end up a touch narrow and fell out the back. But beautiful start. You cannot ask for a better one and two here. I mean, Ski getting around, releasing a little bit of pressure, so we like to see super early on that backside of three. Everything was going swimmingly here. Just gets to that four ball. Gets a little open, a little bit back there, I guess. And, yeah, not really not really much wrong, to be honest, Tony. Um, I think that's, that's going to be one that she's going to watch back and just put in, the, put in the experience booklet and say, hey, we made a little bit of a mistake, um, but we had fun. And she put out a, definitely a respectable score, four and a half at 38. With the wind out there, it's it's not ridden off for, for maybe a fourth, fifth place, but um, we shall see um, as we get our next skier coming into the gates. Now I can hear behind me. All right, this is Chelsea Mills. She skied incredible yesterday. Was it a two and a half at 39 yesterday? Yep. Um, 32, so opt in for that 38 headwind, 39 tail. But here we see her coming through that 32 off pass. Beautiful. Oh, a little still up at five. But um, nice and safe first pass. And um, we see Chelsea Mills. Definitely has definitely has maybe a little bit more of a um, movie style. Um, she likes to kind of move around on that ski a little bit more. Um, but as someone who probably moves around a bit more, that's not always a bad thing myself. All right, let's head to the dock and see Zane. Hey guys, I'm here with uh, William Clintock, McClintock Rini. Um, had a big day yesterday. What are, we, what are we looking forward today? Yeah, awesome day yesterday. Felt really good out there, and I'm looking forward to skiing again today. And I mean, the conditions are as perfect as they can be. Um, they're about how they were yesterday afternoon. So 
Um, I would love to get at least one more buoy. I mean, come on, just I was so close yesterday. <laughs> right, and again, and, and you're going for that brick, and I think we have a we have a PB reward if we get one here. So. Yes. Uh, we'll be looking to see that. Yeah, that would be fun. Canadian record. I mean, all the things would go with it, so I'd be super pumped. It's been a long time since I have had a PB, so I'd really like one today. <laughs> well, we're, we're absolutely rooting for you. I hope, hope we can see it today, and uh, we'll, we'll go back to you guys. Thank you. All right, then. Thanks a lot, uh, Zane and Whitney, for that as uh, we uh, get ready to bring Chelsea Mills back into the course, having run 32. 35. This is now 35 off, or 12 meters, and getting the, a pretty decent start. A little bit of a funky gait there, but she's looking good coming in. She's on time. Keeps rocking back out of that 2-4, but she is through that 35. I mean, 35 is an easy pass there for Chelsea Mills. Be interested to, um, to know what she thought of that pass herself. She looks good. She looks solid, but just keeps rocking out the back out of that 2-4. Um, and I know myself, I'm the only one who's in my own head, so uh, on these early passes, I tend to do that myself because it's obviously safe. Um, but just getting a little bit on that tail through the finish of that 2-4. So let's hope she can maybe correct that coming into this next pass. Let's take a look. Very late through this gate here, but nice movements. Um, beautiful one ball, setting up nice and early for that two ball. But not too bad here at two, but just check out. Just getting stuck with not much angle through the finish. Getting the pressure released a little bit early. Um, so she's a little bit narrow at that three ball. That's not ideal for 35. Same thing here at that four ball. Just looking nervous. Um, but kind of same as Elizabeth out there, ran a little bit of a safe 35 and then really kind of dominated um, those movements at 38. So let's hope she can do that. She has a lovely little head breeze um, out there. She's looking over my shoulder right now. It's definitely stiff, um, so she's going to have to be committed on this gate pull out, make sure she's carrying some good speed. Absolutely. Um, and see what she can put together. This is Chelsea Mills, 38 off. 11.25 meters. What is she going to put together for us here? 8 1. Polar opposite of Elizabeth. Let's see what she can do. Bad a gate. Good speed. Oh, Good nice one. one ball. She is nice and early. Round number two, but a bit of a delay two there. Ball. Gets the three. three. She's going to need some in here at four. Oh, she gets it. Decent Finally. Four. Comes through that four. Round five. five and just sticks it out there the, beyond the buoy line for, uh, for six buoys. That is Chelsea Mills. That's a six buoy count. Having run 32-35, that was 38 off. And uh, the current lead, uh, don't forget, is that four buoy count at 10.75 meters, which is going to be the next pass attempted by Chelsea Mills. Yeah, and that um, it doesn't look like the lake kind of shows. I know the wind is up and down. It doesn't look like the, the lake really shows what I'm feeling sat here right now, but um, that is a stiff head breeze out there. Um, but not the smoothest pass. I don't want to sound so harsh. But um, I'm sure that if she was kind of watching this herself, she's going to feel the same. She's maybe not skiing quite how she wants to, but I think she just needs to stand over that ski on that one three five. Her move on that two four six. Her gait looked great. Her movement at one was fantastic, and her four ball. She finally got that ski to rotate. So if she can get out of that two ball um, with just that little bit more angle, I have no, um, I have all the faith in the world that she can get down this pass. She's just going to need to really be confident on that two four. Um, there's Louisa there. On and that dot, watching and waiting. And so far as uh, Chelsea Mills' record over the last 12 months, it's been pretty impressive. Most of oh, her yeah. performances have been into 10.75 meters, All right. including two Let's see, from Chelsea Lundin. Mills. Let's see what she can put together. 39, 10.25, gets the one. Oh, look at Does this. Does not get the two. Does not probably get that three ball either. That two ball is just killing it out there today. Yeah. Um, score under a view. From, from just a quick look there, that is going to be a 2 at 39. She's been skiing incredibly well all weekend, but just couldn't quite get that 2-4 firing on all cylinders for her today. I know she's coming off that ankle injury, and that offside can be a little bit of a nightmare to find again after injury. Maybe a touch now at that one ball, but good hook up out of one. Um, and good movement into two, just could not get that tail of the ski moving through that 2-4. Just feeling nervous, Does getting get stuck. Camera operator needs firing. Let's see. I'm sure we have the boat angle, um, but it'll be interesting to see. She doesn't look that happy like she just got a piece of three. That two to three can make a big difference in these kind of tournaments. Again, late on those gates, um, but good movements to two. Just there, just that tip, just firing out on her. Um, does she get the three? 
I do not think so. I don't think so. Uh, I think that's well inside number three. We will get a confirmation from the judges. Um, next up, we have Luisa Jaramillo. This girl has been absolutely on fire this year. She's she's been in, she's incredibly good in professional tournaments, Louisa. She's young. Um, I don't know how old she is. Is she 22, 23? Uh, she is 20. 21 something. 20? Yeah, she's 20. Yeah, she's 20, which means that she's still eligible to ski in the, in, the, in the under 21 worlds, which she will be doing in Guadalajara in about a week or so's time. Yes. She, um, she has done, yeah, she's just been incredibly well. She, me and her have kind of, kind of hopped onto the pro scene at the similar time. Uh, kind of two, three years ago, and she pretty much skied amazingly every single pro tournament. Uh, she's incredibly consistent. She's been getting through that 38 for so many years, and she is always mixing it up in there with that top pack. But this year, she seems to have taken it to another level, getting two and a half at 39 for absolutely no reason why she didn't get the three. She threw the fist, got excited, and didn't get back to the exit gates. But um, she looks incredible all weekend. She's been skiing great. Having a little knockback at Masters last week, but... Um, conditions were absolutely shocking there, but here we are, perfect conditions. 32 off for Luisa Jaramillo, 13 former, meters. Former world champion to boot as well, won the oh, uh, the junior man. girls world championship two seasons ago. Oh, they gave they gave Chelsea Mills the two and a quarter. Um, so yep, yeah, she made it round that boy, but let that handle go. Um, let that handle go before, so two and a quarter. The quarter essentially means that you draw a line down the one three five, and if the ski does not come across that imaginary line um, with the handle in the hands, then you get the quarter. The half is if the ski comes back across that line, and obviously she just lost the handle. So laying it out on the line there for Chelsea Mills, and that two and a quarter could prove to be incredibly important for her out there. Um, we all know how important quarters can be, hey, can, Robert? They can be incredibly important, and she's done a great job there, um, especially separating for these, for these ladies, uh, separating that three balls a long way from two. I know it's the same distance from one and two to two yeah. and three, but that three balls a hell of a long way away. Um, so at getting that quarter could prove to be quite beneficial um, for her paycheck this weekend, but let's see, um, let's see who we have left. We have Louisa obviously out on the water now, and including yeah. Louisa, we have three left. So um, this yeah, Regina Jaquis and uh, Whitney McClintock really yeah. need to come afterwards. After this ski, we will know exactly who is going to be guaranteed on that podium first. But let's see, Louisa, very narrow on that first nice. skate. Round Probably number one. respecting that tailwind a little too much. Beautiful two ball. Uh, oh, little on the back out of three. Heavy four ball. That gust coming up. I can feel it blowing my shirt. Is she going to manage it? Yes. Just about. She is perfectly and fine. Leads off the speed at the end of the at the pass to make it through the uh, the exit gates. Yeah. That's uh, Luisa Jaramillo, who is who has just completed a sophomore year of her studies at uh, at Arizona State University over in the Tempe, and uh, looking uh, looking forward right now to a junior year and uh, hopefully uh, looking forward to some uh, great events this summer, including the the World U twenty ones, which will be brought to you exclusively live on. Uh, on TWBC, coming to you live from Guadalajara, starting uh, starting uh, next in about two weeks' time. Well, we're okay. Let's see here. Um, that wind just looks like it's getting a hold of her a little bit there. Getting a getting those hips separated at that three ball, um, and then loose line out of four. But she's okay. She's in, and I think this this pass kind of shows the experience that Luis has gained after these last two three years. Um, maybe kind of a year or two ago that three, four, five would have killed her, but looking still early out there at six ball, even with a pretty stiff tailwind. So um, let's see what she can put together here. Coming in 38 off, lovely head breeze coming in. She's going to need to make sure that she can carry plenty of speed on this gate. Let's see what she can put together here. 38 off, 11 meters. She's going to need to get through this to get a chance at the lead. Good gate coming in. Beautiful hookup out of that one ball. Is she going to get the two? Stood up. A little bit of loose line, but she's still in this. Big three ball. That's what she needed. Come on. Big four ball. She is still in this. Beautiful five ball. That one three five is just absolutely rocking today. Throw in the fist. Absolute killer of a pass. Uh, yeah. 
So a fantastic effort there from Luisa Jaramillo around all six buoys. But the important thing that I looked at on that pass is her, is her ability to maintain her speed down the course. You know, she may have gotten into a little bit of trouble on one or two of those turns, but as long as she kept moving forward, she was always in with a chance. Yeah, she, and that kind of shows that, they kind of shows the division between the, the ladies that are maybe smashing this. I mean, she's run 38 every round this event, and I believe probably all of them other than the Masters that she's entered this year, which is, which is not that easy. Um, and not making it that easy for herself there, but she kept moving, she kept swinging, and that five ball, um, that really shows how well she can turn that ski and let's see. So she's through a third 38 of the weekend. Throw in that fist. She loves to throw the fist. <laughs> Pot kettle black on that one for me, probably. But um, PB in the last round, getting that two and a half. Let's see if she can get that full three ball today. There's those previous winners. Regina J Jack was on the dock. Let's see, can see if she can dig deep to find an S turn. All right. Maybe. Let's see this. Let's see what she can do. Can she put another PB? Narrow gate, but good one oh, ball. Good, Come good on, Louisa. Start. Let's see a big two ball. Oh, she gets stood two. up. And does not get the three. What a start. She is. You can see that's one of those happy, sad frustrations. You know, she's happy with how she performed this weekend. But just couldn't quite get that final result that she wanted. Um, and you can see that big smile, big frustrations. But um, I think she's going to be pretty proud of how she skied this weekend. Yes, and, indeed. That um, matches the, the scores that she produced over at the, uh, over at the LCQ. And, uh, and it's... At least, at least one or one and a half who is better than what she typically does uh, during the course of the season. So this is some good, good skiing there for Louisa. Yeah, and it's the one, one thing you've got to watch out for is once a righty starts figuring out how to turn that one ball, it does not take long before they start getting down it. You know, she's been stuck at that one at 39 for quite, quite, a, quite a, a year or two probably now. Um, she'll occasionally get out of it, but now she's starting to get out of that one ball. She's starting to turn that two ball. And that is when, that's when people start getting dangerous, especially as a righty. Because it can take a minute to figure out that gate, figure out that one ball and those new line lengths. But, I mean, look at that one. You cannot get any better. I know she's on a new ski, so she's just getting used to how this thing rides. Catches her out at the two ball. Um, and look at that scream. Smacking that three ball. That's what she wants. But um, she's going to be happy with that. That puts her in third place right now. So that guarantees Ali Nicholson on that podium. Someone Absolutely. who is going to want to be standing on top of that podium right now, however, is Regina Jaquiz up next. This will be 32, I imagine. Um, yeah, she's 32 be, off start. Yeah, she's going to be looking for the 41 head. Um, so 32, just Regina kind of doing what Regina does best, getting that ski around, snapping it through, and just being incredibly light. Oh, drone failure. Coming into that five ball, incredibly early pass. Um, and yeah, just a smooth 32 there from Regina. Um, and that's one thing she does so well. She gets that ski in between her and the boat so quick, but stays light. All right. And uh, let's check in with Zane. Guys here with Luisa Armillo, big, uh, not quite as big of a score as yesterday, but you got to look at three ball. Uh, so you got to be pretty happy with that, especially in that tailwind out there. Yeah, I mean, I thought the wind wasn't going to be as strong, but it's definitely there. So I'm super happy with my score. Cool. Well, we were, uh, you know, we were hoping that you were going to get over to three, maybe turn it, and uh, you know, get a look over at four. But uh, you know, great skiing today. We're super excited, super excited for you. What, what's your next tournament you got coming up? Thank you. Um, I leave next Sunday for Under 21 Worlds, so I'm super excited about that. And uh, yeah. Well, cool. Well, good luck at that, and uh, we look forward to seeing you there. And we'll uh, we'll head back to you guys. Indeed, we will look forward to seeing her on that event, which will be brought to you exclusively live on TWBC. We're here right now at the 2023 Lake 38 Pro Am, presented by S Lines, and. Uh, Coming into the course on 12 meters on pass number two, this is Regina Jaquis. Her resume just is absolutely stacked with tournament titles, world championships, world records. I mean, she has basically done it all and uh, gotten the t-shirt. You know what I think one of my favorite things about Regina is? Yeah. She just, uh, she's done everything and she is possibly one of the most pas passionate skiers that she'll ever meet. Oh, yeah. The fact that she, she blew a knee out two years ago jumping 
and she still decides to come back jumping. She won a jump tournament this year already. I think she did pretty well at Masters as well. Um, mm -hmm. And just the passion that she still has after winning everything multiple times. I don't think there's probably a tournament that she's won. Um, unfortunately, she can't make it to the, a lot of the Europe stops because she, she runs her own pharmacy. But um, she does just an incredible job of keeping the passion alive for this sport. And, I mean, she was out there tinkering. She got two at 41 in the first round. She's out there tinkering. I don't know if that's just to get into Whitney's head or not. But she's tinkering a fear, and she's saying, ah, it's not as good as it can be. I'm like, you just got two at 41. But she's, ah, it's, and she is it's close to there. Um, and she is integral to the design uh, process that, uh, that exists at Good uh, Carbon Technologies over in Ogden in Utah. Uh, the, uh, the island here at this competition brought to you by Good, as a matter of fact. And... Uh, Regina Jaquis, as we uh, look at the dock there, how cute is that? that is anyway, so look. Regina Jaquis approaching the course on pass number three. She's gone through 32 and 35. This is 38 off, 11.25 meters. Go, Roberto. Beautiful gate there on that 38. Uh, shows the experience, getting the speed. A little bit of loose line out of two. She is all still in this beautiful three ball. That 135 is firing on every single cylinder possible. Um, again, beautiful five ball. And that was a lovely pass there from Regina. Very smooth, very slick. And like I say, she just does such an incredible job of what 99% of people really struggle with, me included, is um, getting so much angle through the backside and of the boy and just um, been light with it. She lets the ski build pressure so you get a ton of speed and you let the load build. Um, beautiful start there to that one ball and I know we talk about gates a lot here but I'm going to keep on talking about them um, and for somebody who doesn't really work on gates too much I talk about it a lot here um, she did an incredible job there she spotted the wind and that probably shows the experience that she has over these younger competitors in that she knows exactly what this wind looks like she knows exactly how much it's going to slow her down um, she's won here multiple times and she's skied in every conditions possible so I think that shows in that kind of performance and just getting the perfect gait no matter what. Um, so she's going to be coming in here at 39. So Regina makes this look easy. I mean, I watched both of her 39 rounds. Um, and, I mean, the 39s were just about as perfect as you can get. But we have a stiff breeze. 39 is an incredibly hard pass. I don't think even 10 women have ever ran that 39 in their lives. So um, it's not an easy pass. But let's see what Regina can do here. She's going to want to get down. It's put some pressure on Whitney. Not the best one ball. She's going to need a good two to get herself back in it. She gets it. Uh, how's this three looking? Beautiful three ball back in this pass. Early as can be. Needing the five ball. And she is through Absolutely. that 39. Remember, I, I'd love to... Vince, we need, we need to get Vince on, on research. But I don't know how many women have ever run the 39 off pass. Is it about... Nine or eight, nine, ten of ten women ever run it. I mean, I, I mean, I can't easily recall myself uh, totally the amount of women that it's uh, that, that have uh, that have run thirty nine and a half off and gotten into forty one off. I know that three of those competitors are here. That's Whitney, the Regina, and and Chelsea, uh, who uh, ran it for the first time last season. But I mean, so far as the others are concerned, maybe Jamie Bull. I mean, she she's run thirty nine and has con and has set a world record with that. All so right. beyond that, man on. Man anyway, on. Either way, we, we don't need to get too. But this is not an easy pass out there, and she just dominated that pass beautifully. Um, and yeah, early with kind of a uncharacteristic one ball there from Regina, getting a little bit of tip rise, but smashes the two ball. She's back on time before. Um, before she's even crossed the wake, but smashing six ball even. So let's see. This is the money pass. Yesterday she kind of, kind of ate it across to this three ball. Let's hope she's put that out of her mind, and she is going to hopefully get the one ball. She's had incredible one balls all weekend. This is 41 off, 10.25 meters. Let's see what she can put together. Strong gate pull out, good, good speed, nice timing. Boom gets a not the, the best one ball. Does she get the oh, two? Oh, collides into number oh two. My God, oh, that, that is a huge, huge fall. And that is uh, uh, that has rattled her cage a little bit. And uh, hopefully she's okay. We... She's put her hand up. Oh. But, uh, but sometimes that can be a little bit instinctive. And it uh, looks like she's communicated with someone along the shoreline to indicate that she is uh, a-okay. She'll nah. swim back into the shore. We'll wait on the score, but uh, let's check out this instant replay on 41 off there, Robert. Oh, the fact that nothing released there is a little bit scary. Ouch. Um, 
Does not get the one ball. Gets that tail stuck. It's kind of what Regina does, but you just cannot get away with it oh, on 41. Oh, that is. Ah, that oh. tip catching that. Oh that's, oh, that's a hip grind right there, I tell you. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's... that's <laughs> she's a strong girl, um, and I'm sure she'll be okay, but um, she maybe needs to look at, look at letting that release at some point. Um, either way, she's getting... Yeah, just not quite getting that tail side. Tail getting stuck in the water there. Um, and I believe she gets the fo- that gets the two gets a piece of the two, but it's going to be a quarter. How much of the two though? Yeah, she, it's going to be a quarter at most. Um, she lets. Well, I think an easy telltale sign is she finished. She was swimming outside of the boy line, so um, it's pretty impossible for her to be getting back under the line if she finishes outside of the boy line. But um, even this shot looks impressive. Yeah. <laughs> um, confirmed score one and a quarter. That quarter is big. Um, Whitney, I mean, she had a two both rounds, turned it in the second one. She is a lefty, so she's left the door open. A very far door, a very small door, and a very tricky door to get to. But if someone is going to do it, it is going to be Whitney. And I know these two have competed head-to-head for years and years and years. Um, and both of them are just as hungry as ever to, to put some good stuff out there. So Whitney's going to be kind of seeing the door. But the toughest thing right now is... She knows she can win this. She knows she can get two. Um, she has done for both the other rounds, but she has to go through 32, 35, 38, 39, none of which are easy passes. Um, and it's going to be a real challenge to get there, but I'm excited to see where Whitney can um, can get here. And I believe the, the pro tour spread, there's three points in between these two right now. Yeah, 77 and 74. I'm not quite sure how that happened because one of them won one event one of them won the other event with the same cash prize but either way Whitney is in the lead um, I'll be intrigued to see that but yeah uh, so there's points for best score so maybe that's where Whitney is in the lead right now um, but let's see what she can do she's out in that water coming through to 32 off here for Whitney um and let's see what you can put together. Conditions look pretty pleasant out there right now. Again, it's gusty conditions out here a little bit. Um, so it's kind of got to cross your fingers and hope that you've been nice to someone to get nice conditions. But beautiful start to that gate. Lovely hookup at one. And again, Whitney doing a very similar job to Regina, Getting that ski round, set, go. There's no yeah, massive there shoulder le- lean crazy early. She gets the ski under the line. Isn't patient there, but becomes patient for the boat to pick her up. Um, right, excellent skiing there from that. excellent skiing there from Whitney McClintock Greeny, and uh, for those of you out there that are w- that want to vote for the skier of the day, uh, presented by Two U Nutritional Bars, go vote for the uh, skier of the day. Waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play, and you can vote for your skier of the day. And the uh, when we tally up all the results, we'll present a special prize to the skier that has gone at the most vote. Let's check in dockside with Zane. I'm, uh, I'm here with Regina Jaquist. Uh, just got off the water. Um, put herself into the lead. Took a little tumble. Feeling okay? <laughs> a little headache. No, um, no I, I just was getting better gates yesterday than, than that set, but um, it feels great out there, and I think the girls all ski good, and we'll just see. But, um, no, I'm happy. Uh, anytime you get into 41 off and it goes to 41, you can't really get mad. Cool. Well, uh, well, great skiing out there, and uh, we look forward to seeing you, you know, further on in the season. Yes, thank you. Yeah, back to you guys. All right, then, and uh, one of our good friends we can actually uh, trust and rely upon to, uh, to bring us uh, some, some stats uh, on occasion is our good friend John Horton, who reliably tells us that 11 women in the, uh, in the history of the sport have run through 39 and a half off. We'll go through some of those names in a moment. One, one of them of will be right Whitney mcclung Tokrini. Beautiful. I mean, this 35 is as early as you can run it. And that's the thing, because Whitney and Regina, they get so much angle at the, at the back side of the boy, they can create so much freedom off that second side with a strong edge change that that tailwind isn't quite going to affect them as much. It's the same wind, but it's a different path through the course. Uh, so that was a very easy 35, exactly what I would expect um, from Whitney there. But yeah, 11, 11 women, that, 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 was, that was more than I, than I thought. But. Yeah, I, I, I thought it had been a little bit fewer myself. But uh, those of you that have access to the live chat, you can actually see that list 
uh, by subscribing to the TWBC uh, YouTube channel. You can get involved with the chat. And also by hitting the bell icon, you can actually be informed as to the next time we go live. Those 11 women in uh, in in uh, in in relative order, I guess. Uh, Christy Overton Johnson uh, ran it all the way back in the in the uh, the mid 1990s. Natalie Hamrick, uh, Kareen Nolan, Regina Jaquis, Whitney McClintock, Rini, April Cobuella, Manon Costar, Brooke Baldwin, Sam Damala, Jamie Ball, and as I hinted on just a few minutes ago, Chelsea Mills, who won it, who uh, who ran it for the first time last year. All righty, back to the water. Skier of the day trophy going clash. Um, okay, 38 off. Let's see what she has. A beautiful, beautiful headwind out there. It's going to slow her down nicely. She's going to need to commit to that gate, commit to center line, and she will be free. A little bit shoulder heavy on that one ball, but a good start. Good two, getting that ski around nicely. Good three. She's early and smooth into this four ball. That offside, just textbook there from Whitney. I mean, that 2-4 right now is just... Um, we always know Whitney can, can turn an onside. Um, gets that little head bob back out of that 1-3-5. But that 2-ball right now is just just amazing. There's not really much more she can ask for. A little bit slow through the start of this pass. Um, not quite getting the tight line that she was getting through the, through the end. But um, kind of how she probably wants to be running a 38 right now. Just getting through it nice and safe. Doesn't have to be crazy aggressive through the front of the ski, creating good freedom. And just look at that. There you go. Just seems to have a brilliant line control. I mean, more than anything else. Yeah, well, the line control at the finish of the turn comes from whatever you do before the turn. So um, that, that move there, that little bit of freedom that she gets in the boat allows the ski to come under the line. It allows her to start moving towards the weight without creating a, a too much load too early. And um, that sets off a chain reaction of good moves off the second side and creates good freedom and line control there. So... Um, incredible ski in there from Whitney. She's just on fire right now. And I believe she's coming and doing a lot of the Europe tours. So yeah. we have, um, she's going to want to keep that Pro Tour leaderboard spot at the top. So let's see. We have 39 off. Tail Breeze, Whitney, McClintock, Rini. Let's see what she can put together. All right. Here we go. 10.75 meters, 39 and a half off. Okay. Currently in third place right now, but looking good to gain, high, gain a higher spot. Here she comes. Good. That's two number ball. two. Shit. She's good to go on number oh. four. Oh, huge, huge turn on number three. Settles down for four. Good turn on five. Ooh. Takes a big hit off five. Oh. Manages to get round buoy number six. And boy, did she have to fight her way out of that one. That was not textbook. <laughs> not. Sorry, I think I made some noises there that sound like I was trying to get rid of my dinner last night. That was um, <laughs> some interesting skiing there from... from Whitney, um, but incredible strength for her to get through that. I mean, that three ball is just, and I think it kind of proves why Regina and Whitney are just a little bit of a step ahead right now is that would have killed off 99% of other men or women um, who have ever put on a psalm ski, that three ball, but beautiful one ball. Um, that little bit of loose line she's been getting all set, but uh, nothing that she can't handle. I mean, hook up out of two, balance set, eyes are on the prize. Um, watch her head. She moves it so well, but oh, can't see it through the spray. But loses those hips. So much strength at that four ball. Not, sorry, three ball. Not the best four ball. But she's safe. And that is going to sting the lower back tomorrow morning. But she is through the 39. That is the barrier. I mean, that tailwind is, yes. is strong. But she's coming here. Head breeze 41. She's oh. coming around that island. She knows what is on the line right now. Here um, she comes. And let's see. 41 off. 10.25 meters here. She needs for more than one Whitney and a quarter McClintock. for the win. Rini. What's she going to do? Strong pull out in this head breeze. She's going to need to get a good comes. one to get a full piece of two. Entrance. She gets it. Come she on, Whitney. It. She's going to turn and it. she takes the win here at Lake 38 Pro there for 2023 go. with a two buoy count at 10.25 meters from Canada, Whitney McClintock Rini. I would be incredibly interested. I'm just a man of facts that I don't know today. Would that be one of the first women's events where it's taken a two in every round? Well, I, 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 don't, I, I would have a hard John, time recording anyone that skied that consistently well, from round saying, to round to round. To get, and, and in, the pa in the past it's been, okay, here we have the podium. Whitney McClintock Rini in first place with two at 41. Regina Jaquiz in second place with one and a quarter. And Ali Nicholson sitting in third place on that bottom step. 
four at 39. Incredible skiing there from the ladies. And uh, yeah, just an incredible final and incredible skiing all weekend. Let's take another look at this. I mean, perfect gait. The speed could not have been better. She is a lefty. She dominated on that. And just, I mean, if this was any other day. She started smiling off that first week. Yeah, she knows. She hit that rope. She knew. Um, and that's a, that's a turner right there. But that's been three times now that she's got two at 41 in one tournament. I mean, I can't recall anything, any, any, any time that's happened before. I, we know there's been maybe two or one twos thrown around, but this could be kind of, this could be kind of setting the scene for a, um, a record-setting summer and season. I know Whitney's heading to Europe, so um, this is incredibly exciting. I mean, just insane skiing there from Whitney and, um, and taking the crown off Regina who won here last year. Exciting and, stuff. But, and, um, and do you know what? That's going to be additional points for Team Radar as well, as she is a member of that uh, Radar team, along with, uh, with Pedrini and with uh, Robert Pagosi. Yeah. Uh, I believe they're currently in fourth spot right now on the brand uh, leaderboard. So uh, they, that uh, additional points will I, be um, very welcome. Let's I, check I'm in on Dockside just... with Zay Nicholson. Bye. Guys, I'm here with your uh, Open Women's Champion, Whitney mcclintock Uh How did it feel out there? Um, today was a little, I was a little worried about the wind gust, I'm not going to lie. Um, but I let that get to my head too much of the Masters. So um, I was preparing myself better this weekend that I can ski in wind, I can do this. And um, all the girls went out and skied amazing scores today. Uh, they were running their stuff in the tailwind too. So um, I just trusted that my boat was going to be there for me. Um, Mario feels amazing behind the wheel, as always. And, uh, yeah, I got through it. I'm so proud of myself for it. Yeah, and then we got Baby Zane down here giving you the first person out of the water. It's, yeah. That's awesome to see him here and, uh, you know, have, you have a mom duty. So congratulations on the win. Thank you. Yeah, having Zane with me is a huge blessing. It's a little bit of work, and we miss a little bit of sleep, but he's wonderful. Come here, babe. Say hi to Grandma and Grandpa. And Daddy. Um, I just got with my mommy, so uh, mommy, I watched them, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, great. That was good. Yeah, great. Well, there you have it uh, from from little baby Zane himself. It was great. Congratulations, Whitney, Thank and back you. to you guys. Good. He ought to be doing the interviews <laughs> if I was being honest. But there you go. Wonderful stuff there. Whitney McClintock Greeny. There you go. Your champion here at Lake 38 for uh, for 2023. Ahead of Regina Jaquist, ahead of Ali Nicholson, Chelsea Mills, Luisa Jaramillo, uh, Lisbeth Montavon, Ali Garcia, and Alicia Bagnoli. Uh, the places from one through to eight. So great, great skiing from all concerned. Okay, so let's have a look at the uh, the Pro Tour standings. Whitney McClintock Greeny currently with a 10-point uh, uh, lead ahead of Regina Jaquis right now for, uh, for one and two. Uh, Ali Nicholson back there at 64 points. Jamie Bourne, 55. Chelsea Mills on 50. Paige Rini, uh stuck there on 20 points. Nita Ross, uh, similarly so, on 17. Luisa Jaramillo, uh, gaining some points from this competition, is on 13. Alicia Ban Bagnoli, uh, increasing her point uh, total to 12. Ali Garcia, likewise, on 10. Lisbeth Montavon uh, on 9. And uh, Karen Trulove still there on 4 points. So far as the brand leaderboard is concerned, Syndicate are on 176, uh, thanks to Ali Nicholson's uh, score. Radar Skis has moved up uh, into second place, and now it's a two-way tie between Radar Skis and D3 on 146. But don't forget, we have got the, uh, the men's slalom final to take place in the next few minutes. Good in fourth, LaPointe in fifth, and Conley in sixth right now. All right, men's slalom final taking place in the next few minutes. Uh, we are going to take a little bit of a break. In less than 10 minutes, men's slalom final, and uh, right here at the 2023 Lake 38 Pro and presented by S Lines. We'll be back right after this.
I told you there was a place, a place where the sounds of nature are only broken by the roar of a boat, a place where that summer feeling lasts all year long, a place where the Florida sun is only outshined by the smiles of the skiers, a place where first-time skiers can ski alongside world champions and the world-class coaches work with all levels of skiers. What if I told you there was a place where life slows down and your only job is to make lifelong memories? That place is Swiss Water Ski Resort. Book your trip at SwissWaterSkiResort.com. Times. How about you? Yeah, I gotta set in. Uh, just gonna make a quick phone call here. Oh, of course. Can you get that, Will? Yeah, man, I got it. Thanks for calling Wake House. This is Will. Uh, yeah, looks like we've got those in stock. All right, then. Welcome back to Lake 38 here just outside of Quincy in Gadsden County, uh, Florida, which in itself isn't too far away from Florida state capital of uh, Tallahassee. And uh, we've uh, just been witness to some great slalom skiing uh, courtesy of the women. And we're about to go into the men's competition, starting off with Robert Pagosi. Then we've got uh, Benjamin Stadelbau, Sasha Deska. Uh, Adam Saddlemeyer, Dane Meckler, Robert Hazelwood, Nate Smith, and finally Fred Winter. And uh, joining me here in the announcing point is uh, Zane Nicholson. So how are you doing today, sir? Man, good. We have uh, just got to watch that women's slalom event. Uh, it was uh, really exciting, good skiing going on there. Uh, Whitney taking that, that, that home. And, uh, um, you know, so we're, I'm looking forward to seeing these, these men get out here. And uh, conditions are pretty good. So we'll see what they've got going on. All right, then. So before we go into the men's uh, competition, let me tell you the winner of the women's audience prize, uh, Leona Abbey. Leona Abbey, uh, if your name has just been call called out, jump up and down, shout and scream, because you have won yourself a Connolly ski of your choice. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's, uh, that's nice. Got to get, get, get the season started. I know we're... Uh... We're kind of early into the pro season, but it's also, uh, you know, just being coming uh, season at home or maybe the end of season for some people at a new Conley ski is uh, is a great way to, you know, to get skiing right for the for this season or next. Absolutely. So, uh, so Leona will uh, get in contact with you very, very soon. The uh, the prize for the on the basis of the men's slalom competition were, is yet to be resolved, of course, and that is going to be based upon the top three uh, the, as they end in this competition. But with that in mind, let's check in with Ali Nicholson. All right, here with Benny Saddlebar. Yesterday we talked about your uh, dinner before. What was for breakfast this morning? Uh, same breakfast as you, I think. Uh, Canopy Road. Um, I had. Uh Eggs and turkey and bacon, avocado, all good stuff, good fuel. All right, well, hopefully that's the, the meal that makes it happen, right? How are you feeling about the wind? 
Yeah, good. We got a hen with off the dock. It's a little bit up and down, but I think it's uh, absolutely beautiful out here and then uh, do it my best for the finals. All righty. Well, best of luck out there, Benny. Thank you. Back to you guys. All right, then. Breakfast for you, sir. Man, I, uh, I had the, the continental breakfast down at the hotel, so uh, uh, a little bit of uh, apple juice and you some got, eggs. You got the old Bob Marley uh, uh, continental breakfast. Yeah, I, 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 didn't, I didn't go for the, for the brunch. I, I, I decided to come over here and watch some of the, uh, the amateur skiers this morning and uh, got some good skiing out of there. Saw several PBs um, on site from our amateur skiers, and uh, hopefully maybe we see some PBs here from our, uh, our male athletes here in this Open Men's final event. All right, then, and if you're tuning in to, uh, to us, no matter where you happen to be in the world, uh, uh, thank you for doing so, and uh, we, uh, we certainly appreciate our audience and uh, that, uh, that men's audience prize, uh, as, I, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, will be, uh, will be revealed. Uh, the winner of that prize will be revealed after the conclusion of the men's slalom event. But the... Uh, the Vote, vote for the skier of the day is still very much open. Go to waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play. Or if you go to the main site, it will be on a, off a drop-down menu. You, uh, you hit that, hit play, and you vote for skier of the day. And uh, whoever gets the gun as the most vote will get the skier of the day prize uh, presented by 2U Bars. So here we are at uh, Lake 38 uh, Pro-Am, presented by S-Lines. Our island is uh, brought to you by Good Carbon Technologies. Our dockside interviews coming to you courtesy of, uh, of Stokes. And uh, once again, we thank uh, S-Lines uh, for providing us uh, with, uh, with some great product to use during the, uh, the course of this event. And, I mean, you had the chance to ski with the S-Lines, uh, the, uh, the, the Exa Series uh, rope. And uh, how, how did it feel to you, sir? Well, Tony, I mean, I've been skiing with that rope all week. Um, I, I got one on Monday, and, uh, man, it, it feels great. Um, I, 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 thought, I thought it skied great, and, uh, um, you know, and we were, seeing, we're seeing good scores out of our skiers here, too, so, so we know that it's a good rope. Um, you know, it, we've, we've definitely heard in the past that there were some ropes that skiers did, did or didn't like, and this seems to be one of the ones that the, the skiers uh, are, are, are happy about. All right, then. So, uh, with the ropes in play and uh, the skiers about to take to the water, we've got the men's slalom competition. There's Benjamin Stadabauer just trying to get into his, uh, into his happy place, so to speak. Robert Pagosi uh, on the, at the end of the dock, uh, no doubt uh, doing likewise. The, uh, the current Pan American Games uh, men's slalom champion. And... Uh, there is the current Swiss national men's slalom record holding. And just look at that shot. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, does it? The brilliant facility here. And uh, when, uh, when Keith, uh, Keith Alberton, actually bought uh, this, uh, this plot of land, or several plots of land, as it turned out, uh, it didn't actually have the vision in mind to actually build a lake. That came a lot, lot later. And uh, he, he managed to have just enough room to, uh, to get that lake in. And uh, it, skis, it skis among the, uh, the best places in the entire world. Yeah, I know. I mean, uh, it's, it's a relatively new lake. And, and you know, I, I found out about it years ago. And uh, it, it's been a place where, you know, skiers come to get a good score. Um, you know, since it since it's uh, it, it, it he he built the lake, it's just it's it's been a great place to come and ski. Tournaments are great. They have the seventh buoy over there for uh, you know we put some shots in there where they got pool and darts for people to hang out and get out of the sun for a little bit. And uh, um, you know, and then you get to ski here and 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 it's it, it does ski. It's it's one of the you know best skiing lakes in the world. So uh, um, and 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 the scores are are, are there to back it up. All right, then. Right you are. So our, our Red Baron, the, uh, the correct craft Nautique, heading its way into the course to make, uh, to make its uh, two uh, simulation passes so that it's going to be in equal footing uh, condition-wise uh, for all of our uh, competitors. And you'll notice today, Tony, that the drivers are not bundled up quite as much as they were yesterday. Um, I know both of the, the boat crew, when we were skiing second round, had their hoods on and, and were covered up. Today they look a little bit more uh, 
But that was more about protection from the sun than more than anything else. Yes, exactly. But today, it, they're, 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 and they were talking about it being hot, so they they might see it there. But we'll uh, we'll head to the dock side with Allie. Here we are with Adam Sotomayor. How are you feeling today? Good, good. Uh, got some good rest in last night and definitely excited. Felt really good yesterday, so I just got to learn from the mistakes and build up on it. Misha, wake you up nice and early this morning? Uh, it was the other way around. You know, early coffee, I'm an early riser. So, uh, yeah, definitely no issues with that. <laughs> keeps you on your toes, keeps you going. Well, best of luck out there. I appreciate that. Thank you. Back to you guys. Excellent stuff there, Ali, and uh, best of luck uh, to uh, to Adam Sadomayer uh, making a little bit of a uh, of a comeback uh, to the scene after a uh, a full year off uh, from uh, from last season, and uh, doing doing pretty well to make it uh, not only into the finals of this competition but also into the Masters uh, uh, last week. Yeah, no, I mean uh, Sledge came back this 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 year with with a vengeance and. Uh... You know, qualified in for the Masters, um, made the final of the Masters, and, and then, you know, here he is this week in, in, into another final. So, um, you know, big skiing out of him. And, uh, you know, we see Robert Pagosi sitting on the dock who, uh, you know, kind of made it in last minute in that second round. But, uh, he, you know, he's also one of these competitors that's been, you know, come back this season and, and been skiing pretty, pretty well this season. Right you are. And uh, looking out at the... Uh end of end of the dock or Robert Pagosi getting ready to uh, to go uh, to go to battle uh, certainly uh, very very capable with hanging uh, with the uh, with the top slam skiers that we have on this uh, on this list uh, our eight skier final he's got his handle he's about to uh, get into the water which he's done so and will uh, will take uh, take to the water on that radar uh, vapor pro build he's a member of the radar uh, ski uh, ski brand team the uh, the brand uh, leaderboard uh, currently shows a radar uh, gaining on the on the competition as it stands right now yeah if i'm not mistaken tony i believe that they are tied with d3 right now in second yes but, they are uh, um, you know, we'll see if they could if they could up that here with, with this round. But it'll be tough with uh, with Nate and Freddie. Um, you know, left to ski after Robert, but uh, we'll bring him around that, that that island and bring him in past number one. All right, here we go. This here is Robert Pagosi, the Lake Thirty Eight Pro Am Slalom Men's Final, presented by S Lines. Here we go. Thirty meters, minimum starting line length. Yeah, and Robert's got that. He's got a really kind of unique style, and and you'll see it kind of come around uh, as he as he gets further down the line. But that was a, a textbook looking opener there at a, at 13 meters, um, you know. And this is just a warm up pass for these guys. Their 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 first two passes are just basically walking the park, and they're they're filling everything out, filling the boat out, filling the driver out, and um, you know then they really don't get get going until until that 38 off. 38 off pass and I mean in respect to going in on a certain line length I mean how uh, I mean what elements of 32 off are similar to say 38 off I would say I, I mean so it is short line so you are getting a you're you know you're swinging up on the boat more than you do at, at, at your longer line lengths at like 28 off 22 off um, you do end up higher up on the boat so uh, you are getting that space and and you've kind of got to, to time up your turns but you know then the speed is not quite the same as it is at 38 off all right let's check in with Ali Right. Here with your top seed, Freddie Winter, how are you feeling today? I'm a little bit tired, a little bit fatigued right now. I don't know, like a sort of calm before the storm sort of thing, but um, top seed. Not not every day I get to do that, so I'm going to go and enjoy it. It's going to be fantastic. Awesome, awesome. A little bit of wind out there. Feeling pretty good about it, though? Yeah, I mean, it's tricky from the far end. We we had a couple of goes at it yesterday, um, but I think the, the headwind's probably a bit too strong for optimal. There's some rain, actually, we feel on our backs here. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. But, I mean, you know, if you're going to – no one's going to take 39 into the wing because you need to big score at 41 that way. So we'll be good. It's going to be a lot of tailwind 39s. Hopefully the rain and the wind kind of hold off for us. Best of luck, Freddie. Back to you guys. All right, then. Excellent stuff there. Thanks a lot, Ali, and thanks a lot there, Freddie Winter. And uh, Freddie Winter uh, last night uh, uh, 
uh, recorded uh, the latest edition of On Tour with Freddie Winter as part of the TWBC uh, podcast. Uh, check that out on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, on, on Google Podcasts. Uh, there were some things mentioned on that uh, podcast uh, yesterday that were definitely eye-opening. So uh, uh, listen, listen into some spicy content with that. Yeah, and I always enjoy uh, the content we put out here at uh, TWBC. You know, it's great listen and, uh, um, you know, give you something to do when you're on those long car rides. Indeed, indeed. And, uh, yeah, those those car rides can be quite long. I mean, um, there's a, there'll, be, there'll be a seven-hour ride for me between here and Baton Rouge, uh, my, my part of the world, a little bit less uh, from here back to Central Florida for a lot of uh, other skiers. And we getting a little drop or two of uh, rain at the moment so uh, that could uh, throw a, uh, a wrench into the works hopefully the majority of that could uh, could stay a little subdued yeah and it's really little drops so i think i mean the sun's out i think we're just got a little one little cloud that's kind of uh dropping a little water on us but it doesn't look like it's going to rain on us if it does for too long but here we go we got 38 off this is robert gozi See that he's one of those skiers that uses that one-handed gate, and then you'll start seeing that unique style that he's got where he really here at three ball gets over the front foot, drops the hip, and, and allows the ski to kind of slam under him on that onside turn. Um, but, you know, now you're starting to see him, the skier, kick up and, and, and really push the ski at this 38 off pass. All right, nicely done there from Robert Pagosi. Seems to have uh, found a... Uh a new level of comfort out there, whereas uh, in years before, uh, everything was like uh, all or nothing, tout or rien. Yeah, so. yeah, and, you know, Robert's getting a little more consistent, and, and, you know, he's looking good. As you take a look here at his 38 off pass, um, you know, you'll see kind of what I was talking about here on his, on his off, or on side here. You see he drops that hip and allows the ski to kind of slide under. He kind of brought the handle into the inside of the hip, checking it up, but... You know, you'll see these guys check their speed on these early passes, just making sure that they, you know, manage it through and 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 get down the line. But um, you know, now he's he's coming into this 39 off pass, and he'll be knowing that he, he's going to have to run this if he's going to, um, you know, you know, want a shot to, to to even try to get on the the podium here today. Has your first skier off in this open men event? All right, checking in on some of the messages that have been uh, been put uh, put down on the uh, the live chat here on the uh, the TWBC YouTube channel. Uh, one of our one of our good folks uh, seems to have uh, one or two uh, pleasant comments uh, for for Ali. As a matter of fact, our, our dockside interviewer uh, saying that she has a lovely, lovely voice. Huh. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I I don't know. To, to each their own, but. Uh... We'll we'll have to see. Well, oh, big one ball there for for Ooh. Robert, thirty nine off, getting a there little bit go. there on the tail too. Oh, now, oh he, he put him dug himself real deep, and he didn't have a large enough shovel to get himself out of that one. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Tony. You'll you'll kind of see. We'll we'll take a look here at the replay and you'll see. But he gets he gets really deep out of one, and uh, you know just not quite able to manage the rope going to two and into three and and uh, popping the, the the ski out here. Um, take a look here on his gate. He rotates into the gate really, really good, comes into one. You see he drops that hip, though, and um, the shoulder kind of went, and he was deep and then had to roll into that inside edge into two, causing him to kind of slack the line. And then, you know, over into three, he's pushing super hard with everything and, and, and is blowing that tail. And that's a little unfortunate there for Robert. He was uh, – you know, he'd be, he was looking good there up until that point. And I, I thought he was going to – you know, we were going to see 39 go down really quick and – um, you know, kind of, kind of give confidence to all the other guys on the dock, and um, unfortunately, they're going down around three ball. All right, so that's Robert Pagosi, one skier down. We got seven more to come, and setting the target uh, for our remaining skiers to uh, to get past. And I mean, certainly uh, that uh, that turn round number three. Uh, I mean, he could have could have uh, softened up, up on that turn and uh, still would have given himself a chance to uh, to actually run that pass it's just one of those momentary lapses of concentration one would guess yeah i mean he just he 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 came in with a little bit of speed if he you know he was in good shape and he turns that that ski so well on that offside or sorry that onside turn on 135 if he had just taken it a little bit down course the line would have been tight he wouldn't have had so much pressure to the tail of the ski and, and probably could have kept it in but um, you know, that's, that's, that's tournament skiing. Things are happening a lot faster. And, uh, 
and then the water, you know, he went. But uh, now we'll see, you know, Benjamin Stadelbar, uh, Team Syndicate's gear coming in, and this is opening pass of 32 off, 13 meters. Nicely done on the opener, 13 meters, good extension. That's a lot to play with there. It seems to uh, see, see, seems to put a, a large premium on being able to ski that pass smooth. But let's check in with Ali. Ready for today? Yeah, feeling good. Conditions look really nice. Um, so yeah, excited to get out there. I think we got a pretty good field. So we'll see where uh, where the scores shake out. Yeah, it's going to be – it's a pretty tough field. It's going to be a big score, I think, still, even with the win. Yeah, I think – honestly, I think the win's going to be great. Uh, a little headwind 41, I think, for a lot of the guys. So um, I'm sure it'll be pretty far down the course at 41. So I'm excited. Hopefully uh, we'll be right there with them. All right. Hope so. Best of luck, Dane. Back to you guys. Looks like he needs a coffee. Yeah, and I mean, did you catch that there too, Tony? He said, you know, for a lot of the guys talking about the headwind 41. So, I mean, I, I – it is windy, but you never know. There, there are some guys that like that tailwind more, and they might be, you know, strategically trying to take 41 from that far end in the tailwind um, this round. Uh, you know, but we'll we'll have to wait and see if that comes up to play. Maybe it's something that they need to invoke as a as a game time decision. Uh, for example, using the opt up after uh, after going in with the minimum speed or minimum line leg. Sorry, here we go. This is uh, Benjamin Stadelbauer. A little bit choppy there on number uh, two, but managing to stay focused and stay uh, in good composure right the way through that pass from Switzerland. It is Benjamin Stadelbauer. Yeah, and Benny looking a little unsettled there on that on that 12 meter pass, but. Uh... You know that's the the beauty of it is you get to get to the end and, and you get a get a reset and stop the boat and go back and, and they'll shorten the rope and then they'll come back into 38 off so um, he'll put he'll put that behind him and let's see if we can take a look at kind of what he does here um, you know he's riding that syndicate works 02 and gets a pretty good one and and then comes into two here you see he lets the hands get away from him a little bit causing him to kind of fall over and that's kind of where he got but you know again these first two line links are very very smooth and easy for uh for these boys they're just kind of warming up getting the body ready filling the boat out so um i wouldn't i wouldn't be too worried about that year with benny coming in on 38 off yep he seems to have smoothed out the opening couple of passes uh, very very well indeed now he can start to uh to crank up the intensity to match the, the next uh, few passes, starting off with 11.25 meters. Benjamin Stadelbauer, who lives in Claremont in central Florida, who represents Switzerland internationally. Here he is. Yeah, Benny's, Benny's struggling over there on that two-ball turn. I don't I don't know what, what's happening. It's, that's two passes in a row where two's been a little different, and then after it, he, he gets going and he's fine, so... Um, that'll be something to, to watch out for now as we're shortening the rope and getting to this, uh, you know, 39 off and, and hopefully 41, but a little bit, a little bit shaky there at two ball. Um, you know, probably having a little something here with the gate and then, then the, you know, approaching the two, but take a look here at the replay. And you know, uh, Benjamin Stedelbauer is uh, certainly not averse to making subtle adjustments uh, to his uh, ski either, you know, he, you know, if he feels that there was a little bit more grab at the end of two, four, and six, then he can make an adjustment to the fin so it doesn't, uh, so it doesn't uh, grab onto the end of the turn quite as rapidly or uh, with a little bit less intensity. And that that could be the case here. But uh, but Benjamin Stadelbauer still making it through 11.25 meters now. Hopefully, if he did make any adjustments to the Slansky, this is where it will start to pay dividends for him. Yeah, and I mean. Uh... No, he does get the ski to turn good after after he gets rolling at three. So, um, you know, may, maybe he is, and then that's where you know he gets the ski moving a little bit better um, into three, and that adjustment just a little weird for him. But again, you know, had these warm up passes, so now he he's into thirty nine, and he's really going to know what he's got to do. But comes in on the gate, looks a little bit behind, but gets a pretty good one here from him. Let's see, and there you go, he got his two ball to turn. So, um, you know, not worried about it from thirty eight little bit down course out of four can he manage it into six yes he can look at this 
Six buoys, 10.75. There we go. Benjamin Stadelbauer. Yeah, you better believe. Yeah, and I mean, and that was uh, a good good job managing that pass um, for Benny. And, and you know, got a, got, got a better two ball, but then, you know, got a little down course there at four and, um, you know, able to, able to make it up at five and six. But uh, there you go. There's your first tier um, through that 39 off pass. As we take a look at the replay, seemed to be – a little bit slow when he when he turned in. So um. yeah, known for bleeding off quite a bit of speed into his a gate shot. You know, depending upon where the wind is blowing. But you know, whatever he did, if he if he made some adjustment to the ski to affect uh, a better turn on two, four, and six, this is where it starts to come in. You know, because if the ski starts to bite on you, you know, at thirty nine and a half off, then it could really have a detrimental effect. Yeah, and I mean, I, again, I like if you see right there, even at six, how he kind of outruns it. He, he's he lets he lets his his hands get a bit away from him going into the two four six side, and he, he kind of he runs with the boat. But he did he did really good working into two. So so take a look here. We'll we'll, we'll expect him to get a big one, and then going into two, if he'll keep everything kind of uh, um, you know close close together, it'll drive him out, and we'll get another big two ball like he had thirty nine. But here we go. Entrance gate, number one. Oh, and just taking too big of a chunk on number one and uh, just buried himself on that one. Yeah, and that's, that's a bit of a bummer there for Benny. Uh, that's going to you know, that's gonna leave the door wide open for our, uh, our, our, our next six skiers. But if you see here on the replay, he comes in and just gets off the handle and, and tries to crank it and just loses it a little bit and unfortunately in the water, and that's... That's uh, you know, good skiing for Benny, but but you know, I, I know he's going to be a little bit let down on that one. Would would have liked to got a couple more buoys to uh, to push that 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 um, you know, that lead out. Well, it's a full pass better than what he did yesterday, so he's got that going for him, and he, he is in the lead after two competitors on half a buoy at 10.25 meters. That is Benjamin Stadelbauer. Still one of the few competitors uh, to actually get into 10.25 meters in the entirety of this tournament. So he's got that to hang his hat on as well. Uh, next gear to take to water coming to us out of France. It is going to be Sasha Deska. Yeah, and Sasha, uh, you know, making that switch in the early spring over to the, that HO Syndicate water ski team. And, uh, you know, and it's it's kind of cool to see the different skis that the, that the guys are riding. So you just saw Benny riding the uh, the Workso two, and then you know the next gear off the dock will be uh, um, Sasha Deskunes with that Workso one. So um, you know both skis are, are 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 good skis and 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 work a little different for each athlete. But uh, you know, as we we see Keith bringing the boat back in to to, to pick up Sasha um, and bring him in for pass number one. All right, so Sasha Deska. They say they call they call him the mountain man down uh, in some some people that I know in the, in the ski world. So um, I'm not sure. But I assume he's he's from from up in the mountains in France and uh, you know one one of the stronger guys out out on the in the open man event and uh, be looking forward to seeing him go here in just a minute. All right, so Sasha Deska, as as you rightly said. It was a bit of a shocker that uh, that he uh, that he changed from uh, from a brand that he's uh, been used to for about 20 years to uh, to to another one seemingly out of the blue and he uh, and he seems to have uh, found some new confidence and some new energy out there on that slalom ski. I believe it's the Works one, isn't it? Or yeah, he's so he's he's skiing on the Works one and. Uh... Um, you know, and I, I was talking to him a little bit about it yesterday, and he he uh, he said, you know, he likes it, and he's, he's he's feeling confident on it, and the more he skis on it, the more confident he's getting. So, um, you know, and it's it's it, it's we'll, we'll have to see. You know, he is he has made the final here, and uh, um, you know, he's going to have to run that 39 off, and, and I believe it'll be a tailwind because he's starting here at uh, 32 off. So, we'll bring him in, pass number one. Here we go, round buoy number one. And, you know, this is a skier who has mellowed down quite a lot. I mean, his, much like Robert Bogosi's uh, technique, was very much all or nothing. Yeah, you know, he, 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 he and he, he, 
he still skis very strong, but you're right. It's not quite as as slam dunk and hold on. And if you know it, everything needs to go right, like he, you know, he the, as he's gotten a little smoother and and backed off loading the boat a little bit, you know, you'll see that that uh, he he loads the line more and he'll 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 get more space and create more space without having to generate it as much just with like loading super heavy. All right, then uh, continuing on, I'm Tony Lightfoot. He is Zane Nicholson, uh, the current head coach at the University of Louisiana at Monroe. He's the guy to see for all of you uh, prospective uh, collegiate skiers that are looking to be on a uh, collegiate water ski team. And uh, they'll be doing battle at the... uh, They'll be very much present at the Collegiate National Water Ski Championships, the NCWSA National Collegiate Water Ski Championships. That will take place at uh, Tri Lakes in uh, Zachary, Louisiana, on the very last uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of October. And uh, no doubt you're looking forward to that. Yeah, no, uh, Collegiate Nationals is always a great time. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's always great when it's at Bennett's. I, I, I love that they've got both lakes side by side. So, um, you know, all, all the schools kind of get to ski together. And, uh, you know, it's it's really cool to see the, the sport growing on, on that aspect of uh, – of the water ski side and i mean you're even seeing a bunch of co- you know college students now are, are here skiing these open men events we saw several of them um you know yesterday in the preliminary round so uh um it's 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 it's, it's really cool to see uh you know see the the collegiate side taking off but um you see sasha descoons there uh finishing that 35 off pass nicely done and as uh, sasha descoons sinks into the water let's check in with ali with Rob Hazelwood, pretty consistent skiing yesterday. How are you feeling going into today? Um, I don't really know. <laughs> Just here to have some fun. I was incredibly happy with my skiing yesterday. Um, coming out with two threes is, is a great day for me, so um, hopefully that carries on today. But had a good weekend so far, so just going to go out there and have some fun, hopefully. All right. Well, hey, thanks for coming out this weekend. Best of luck. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> Back to you guys. There you go, the chemistry between those two. Yeah, no, um, I, you know, I've, I, I've, Allie's my sister, so we've been going to eat dinner and stuff with Rob and them, and uh, you know, Rob's a hoot, and he, he, it was kind of cool to hear him say yesterday, you know, he, he was happy to get that three um, off on that first round and kind of get the, uh, you know, the pressure off of him. He said, you know, last year he, he was, you know, ski with pressure on him, and, um, you know, he's be- really been working this year to, you know, kind of come out strong and, and get the pressure off of him, and you're starting to see, you know he's he's looking a little more relaxed at the lake, and it's 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 good to see Rob. You know you know taking off, um, but here we've got a, a 38 off pass for Sasha Deskins. All right, absolutely on that works one from Syndicate. Look at them go. Just allows the ski to rotate, get under the line, and then get going. Like the way he feeds that ski out and. Uh, you know, has the uncanny knack of backsiding even some of the shorter looking passes. Yeah, you know, I mean, he, 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 he looks nice, relaxed, nice, smooth. And, you I mean, he's still working really hard, but you'll kind of see he rotates his hips really well here to get the ski under the line before he actually loads up the rope. And, um, you know, he's just kind of, he's, he's really learned to wait on the boat and it, it puts him into better positions off of the second wake and, allows the ski to turn and uh you know it, it's 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 really good to see Sasha Sasha stepping it up and um you know that's strong skiing there as we take a look at the replay but um you know we're seeing good skiing out of Sasha so I, I'm expecting him to, to to get a good crack here at uh at this tailwind 39. All right so those of you that are uh, that have just uh, joined us welcome to the uh, to Lake of 38 uh, Pro Presented by S Lines, uh, uh, for those those of you that have arrived late to the party, you certainly missed a uh, a treat of an event. So far as the women's slalom skiing is concerned, you can uh, you can scrub her to some earlier action uh, using the uh, the player on the YouTube channel. You can you can do that, or you can hit the live uh, button and stay with us live as we continue on with the men's slalom final with Sasha Deska coming in at 10.75 meters trying to become the only the second person in this final to make it into 10.25 meters a little floaty into buoy number three and he stalls up on number four so benjamin stettelbaus doing the lead on half at 10.25 meters sasha deskin looking uh, a little bit disappointed with that 
Yeah, and uh, you know, Sasha will be a little bit a little bit disappointed with that. You'll you'll see he kind of loses the line into one here. Not sure if the wind kind of pushes him or or um, you know what kind of happened here. We'll take a look. Yeah, it gets off the handle a little bit early into one, so that causes that slack to to create there. So now you're going to see he's going to try to get a big turn. That's onside. Does a good job turning here, but he hops off the handle super early right there and doesn't quite get his width, and and, and that was kind of all she wrote. Now he's getting pulled by the boat. So, um, you know, that's that's a bit of a bummer, but, you know, you got to keep your hands on going out to the buoy to keep the line tight so that you can get the ski to turn. If not, the boat's going to start getting you to run down course with it. All right, as we work away to our next competitor, we are about halfway down the list. We're going to have uh, Adam Sadamaya go next, but... Be sure to get your vote in for your skier of the day. Go to waterskibroadcaster.com forward slash play to enter your vote for skier of the day. Or you can uh, select by going to the front page of waterskibroadcaster.com and just go for, to the drop down on the top menu. And there you'll be enter your desired uh, skier of the day, which uh, the recipient of the top votes will get. This beautiful prize from uh, from right, Two U Snacks. I'm done talking. Skier right. of the day, presented by Two U Snacks. Who would you vote for? Man, there's so there's so many good ones. Um, I, I mean, you know, a I'm partially biased, so my sister skied real well. But uh, you know, Louisa Yarmillo, she got a PB. Um, you know, that's somebody to look at. I know Freddie, he skied well, you know, at your top, top skier in this event. So there's, there's lots of skiers out there for, you know, for you to vote. And Including this one, who is a little bit on a comeback trail. This is Adam Saddlemeyer. Yeah, you know, Sledge is like, like we, we, we just talked about a little bit ago, but Sledge is, is, is on. He, he came back, he was off last season, and, uh, you know, he's been back with a vengeance, uh, making the Masters, making the Masters finals. He's here at the finals, uh, Lake 38, so... Uh, you know, we'll, we're, we're expecting big things out of Sledge. All right, let's check in with Ali. <laughs> Here dockside with Nate Smith, drinking his little Coke, getting his uh, warm-up. Is that your dockside routine? Yeah, I just found one in the fridge over there, last one on site, I guess. Pretty jealous. I looked for one this morning. How are you feeling today? Pretty good. Uh, just kind of watching the wind, see what kind of scores go up, trying to debate whether to start 35 or 32 and um, try 41 from the other end, maybe. I, we'll just see what the scores are and what the weather is, but... Um, Go out and try my best. Yeah, wind's kind of up and down, so it'll probably be a little bit of a last-minute dockside decision, right? I think so. Probably right when I jump in, I'll, I'll make that decision. All right. Well, best of luck out there. Thank you. Back to you guys. All right. Uh, the, there, we, the, there he is, uh, representing D3, along with uh, Freddie Winter and uh, Brooke Baldwin, two-thirds of that team present here. So they're looking to try and uh, get some uh, more points. Uh, they're actually in a two-way tie in second place uh, with, uh, with Radar at this time in the Brian leaderboard yeah no um you know so they're then they, they've got two two good skiers here that the top two seeds are are all team d3 too as well so um but i hey I, I i told you a little earlier tony i was like i i think somebody might think about taking 41 from that far end in the tailwind and uh and there you have it you know nate smith he just he's letting you know he's he's even thinking about starting at 35 so he gets that 41 from the far end um which is different than what we have seen any of the other guys do so far all right adam saddlemeyer getting the getting the job done at 32 and at 35 and uh, looking uh, looking pretty strong looking pretty decent out there and uh, just just going about his business at this time yeah sledge uh, sledge looking nice and calm you know he's he's got his daughter here and uh it's really good to see him you know he, we ali keeps calling it dad duty but he's uh He's, he's enjoying that and then also here being able to, to ski and, um, you know, and doing, doing well. So, um, you know, big shout out to Sledge being able to do that as we get a shot of your current leader, Benny Staddlebar, still sitting on the lead with a half of 41. Um, you know, Sledge is going to be looking to get more than that, but he's going to have to get through two more passes if he's going to want to, uh, you know, challenge that lead. All right, coming in. This here right now is Adam Saddlemeyer. All right, 38 off. This is kind of where it gets going. We feel the wind kind of gusting up a little bit, but uh, 
sledge look at looking nice and strong here um, again this is not you can't tell much of a difference between 35 and 38 um, between those two passes but that was yeah that was a good 38 off pass there for sledge he's looking strong this morning all right not looking bad at all as a matter of fact so looking at this instant replay that drone shot really uh really just on point there our drone pilot there uh connor Pauly doing a uh, a fantastic job of uh, capturing all of the uh, the critical moments there with that aerial camera yeah connor connor killing it with the drone footage that's an awesome shot um cool looking shot and as we see sledge here getting that five ball turn and and uh and go into six so looking in good shape i mean so far so good that was 11.25 meters 39 and a half off or 10.75 meters is coming up soon he's uh, looking to uh, to put 41 off or 10.25 into a little bit of a breeze i mean it's still there i mean it's not gusting as high as it has been but uh, it's certainly uh, something that the skiers need to be wary of yeah, I mean it's a bit up and down right now. It's it's on the downside um, for this 39 off pass, and we'll see you shedding a little bit of speed there at the gate. But see what he's got. A little bit slow out of one. Good two ball there. He's made himself up, and 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 now let's see if he can cruise through it here at four. He's still little, there. Little down course though at, at four, but can he get over to five? Yeah. Boom. There you go. You got it. Adam Settlemeyer getting through that 39 off pass. Getting a little dicey there um, in a couple spots, but he managed it well, and now he's going to, you know, have a good chance to uh, to take the lead away from your current leader, uh, Benjamin Saddlebar, but he's going to need to get more than a half at 41 here if he... And I believe that's the third round in a row that he's actually gotten into 41 off. Yeah, he. I, I believe you're right. I think he ran it both rounds earlier this, uh, earlier this weekend as well. So... Looking good, and the consistency is certainly there, no doubt, uh, from Adam Saddlemeyer. Let's see how far he can get down 41 off and really put a cat amongst the pigeons. That, were right, that right there, Tony, was an awesome textbook two-ball turn. Um, you see his onside Ooh. turn. He, 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 he did really well here. Got a little broken over there into number three, but... Yeah, and you see he goes a little bit down course, but waiting on the boat there and, you know, just managing the line. Um, you know, good good job there for for uh for sledge there on that 39 so uh now he's going to get that 41 in the headwind um the wind is, is is isn't is again still not up super crazy right now so uh it's it, it's looking right for a good score as we take a look as we bring him into the course for uh it's 41 off round number one. Oh, good snap there on buoy number one even better off number two he's still there on three does he get the ski around three into the wakes it's going to be a tough one. Yeah, I mean, I to me it looked like he got around three and got a full three. Um, you know, I, I think you see him; he's a little bit, a little frustrated. Uh, you know, he, which is it's crazy to think that you're a little frustrated with three at forty one. But uh, I mean, with if you look right here on the replay, he had a massive one and two. Um, gets a really good turn here, and um, you know, check out check out this turn. His two ball was was good ski bites it goes and and he just gets a little separated there rolls the shoulders into three and and that was all she wrote and um let's see does he get back to the wakes yes he does yeah, he so does. so uh, okay uh, so the so the two elements that he needed to score three he needs to get outside three and get to the wakes in time for the next set of boat guides he's got the second element there does he get the first one? I, I believe I saw the buoy on the ski on, on that other angle that we've got. We'll take a peek one more time, but I'm pretty sure I clearly saw the buoy. Let's have a look on number two. A little down course there. The uh, the ski got round. But yeah, there's yeah, the buoy. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah we see yeah, the buoy clear, the buoy. clear as clear as a whistle. All right, there. So three buoy count, ten point two five meters. Our new leader is Adam Saddlemeyer with four skiers remaining. Yeah, and that's gonna—I mean—that's gonna be a big score now because uh, again, you've got uh, you know four skiers left, and uh, the wind being up and down, it's 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 gonna be uh, a little tricky. We'll see if we, if if we end up with a, a log jam at three, or or if, if the guys start trying to turn that three ball and go to four. 
All right, then, getting a few messages coming through. We have one here from, uh, from Greg Pauly. I'm sure uh, he is of some relation to Connor. And uh, indeed, uh, yes, uh, just confirmed that. Great shot with the drone and, uh, uh, and give it, giving us a little bit of a praise as well. So uh, thanks a lot there, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Pauly, Greg Pauly. Yeah, and uh, you know the Polly's also over there with the, with the splash threads that have uh, the TWBC gear, and, and 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 they do a great job. And um, you know you got Connor on the camera doing well. Um, I'm actually excited to announce that he is going to come go to school with us at ULM next year. So oh, nice! I'm, I'm looking forward to having him on the water ski team and getting to spend a little more time with him. And uh, um, but yeah, so but now we'll take a look. We got Dane Meckler on the dock. He just saw Adam Settlemeyer. Uh, run three at uh, at 41 both both guys on 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 a good water ski so uh we'll see which uh which athlete can get further down it all right then so uh, dane meckler it is who uh having spoken uh, to him a little bit yesterday is uh, uh is still in the the world of a uh, high finance uh, got his uh, got got his business and a finance degree here at uh, uh, in Tallahassee at Florida State University and uh, now works in uh, mergers and acquisitions within uh, within the military uh, the defense and aerospace industries so uh, that's that's like several several zeros of um, of negotiations are uh, being made yeah, no, and, and and Dane's been Dane's been great at it. You know, I he he let me uh, uh, crash the couch a little bit when I had some stuff going on in Charlotte, and um, you know he was he was doing great there. And I know he's uh, he's progressed and, and moved further in his professional career. But uh, um, you know, it's amazing. It's it's great to see him out here being able to juggle two 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 professions. All right, then through the exit gates, getting ready for the next pass and. Uh... Let's uh, get ready with our uh, with our next uh, competitor, courtesy of Ali Nicholson. Here, 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 here Dockside with Sledge, Sledge, your new leader. New How leader. did it feel out there? Uh, felt really good. Obviously, the wind is uh, ever changing, and uh, that creates a little bit of a uh, of a challenge. But I think I kind of lucked out where I wasn't lined up, and uh, if anything, it helped me into a 41 headwind. So uh, I wish I'd taken a little bit better advantage of it, but uh, three is what it is, and uh, you know I'll take it. Developing a bit of a love-hate relationship with that three ball yet? Yeah, uh, I used to be Cinco at 39. Uh, now I'm kind of a you know, three ball guy. So uh, we'll hopefully one day we'll break through it and uh, we'll be back to Cinco, but at 41, you know, I'll take it. <laughs> well, consistent, great skiing all weekend. Uh, back to you guys. Thank you. And he, uh, he, he, uh, he joins a rather notable club. I mean, um, Thomas de Gasperi is uh, typically Mr. N Mr. Uh, number three on a 41 off you can almost bank upon him to get round three ball at a uh, 41 off in in most competitions and in a lot of those uh, those events where skiers tie with three at 41 that's normally a cutoff score to actually make it uh, or qualify into either a finals or into a major tournament yeah no i mean that 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 it, it used to be that if you ran 39 you'd make it into a final but now you've got to get you know for sure get two but a lot of the times you got to get over and get a piece of three ball if you want to you know even even ski on 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 the next day so uh you know great job for sledge being able to get there being consistently able to get there so um big skiing from him and as we just saw dane meckler run his 35 off pass yep and looking fairly smooth again and the one thing that kind of stands out for me and we'll we'll see it uh, maybe after the next pass is the way that he extends his uh, his his reach and uh, his extension in into each buoy, which uh, it's rather unique. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, Dane, and he he'll be one of the first people to tell you he's one of our shorter skiers. Um, so you know, he's going to have to do things a little bit different than. Um, you know, per se, one of the, the, the longer guys that have, you know, that big ring span and, and, and long, you know, long arms, long legs. But, um, you know, Dane really manages it really well. You see he kind of gets the ski working and, uh, um, you know, he's been, he's been, he's been crushing it uh, the last couple seasons. So um, I'm expecting to see more out of him today um, as we bring him in. The wind is picking up, though, quite a bit here, Tony, for this 38 off pass for Dane. All right, then, here we go. This is uh, Dane Meckler. 
Entrance number one, this is 11.25 meters. There you see that reach. Just, yeah. just places the handle somewhere, rotates around that point, hooks up and goes. Yeah, for all our snow skiers out there, you'll kind of see it. That looks more like a, a pole plant for, uh, for a snow ski. Like when you're making the turn there, he kind of plants and then rotates around that that, that spot where he play, where he places the handle. Um, but that is like a very good observation from you there, Tony. Mm-hmm. I try. All right, then. And just looking here, 11.25 meters. And certainly not one of the taller skiers uh, coming into these uh, slalom events. But he more than makes up uh, for that lack of height with just sheer brutality uh, behind the boat. Uh, much, much like uh, a Regina Jake was, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they, 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 the, sh the shorter skiers just don't have the luxury of, uh, you know, kind of letting go and being out there they've got to they've got to harness their energy and get it to to go outbound more and then get the ski to swing under them so you know dane is it was one of your your textbook uh um skiers that's under six foot tall so uh you know i mean it's 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 great to see that he's he's um you know skiing as well as he is and you know making making uh that that 38 off with that big strong head breeze just look easy as we were going to bring him back in here this should be this 39 off with the tailwind Right then, let's have a look and see. 39 and a half off with the wind at his back. Let's see what he's got. Falling on the back of the ski there at one, but uh, managing two ball turn. Um, yeah, again, getting on the back of the ski out of three. It's a uh, little, a little. Making it look difficult. Yeah, a little, little shaky over there on the 135 side. I, I, I'm not, not, not really sure what, what was going on there, but. Uh, you know, Dane. Dane also is one of these skiers that that's that's figured out that 39 and is is running it. You know, he runs it every time. So if he doesn't, it's it's very 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 uncommon. Um, but he managed his way through it, and now he's gonna you know give himself a, a chance to uh, to challenge that that lead. Indeed, gets in a brilliant start off buoy number one, just buries that ski into the water. Likewise on number two. Handle coming up a little bit high, but that's no biggie for him to recover from. There he is, a member of uh, the uh, the good uh, good brand uh, leaderboard uh, team, along with Regina Jaquis and Thomas de Gatsby. Thomas de Gatsby, I understand, is uh, is currently watching the uh, the events as they unfold uh, from Italy, and we certainly wish him the best of luck going forwards as he gets ready for the European stops of the Water Ski Pro Tour. And. Uh, I'm sure he's enjoying what he's seeing, although he'd probably rather be there himself. But uh, here comes Dane Meckler for Team Good. 10.25 meters, needing more than three to lead. Here he comes, Dan Zane. Yeah, and, and there you go, looking a little more stronger off of one there in this headwind. Oh, and is he going to be able to get it outside of three? Big slide. Oh, ho, ho, ho. He almost did a 360, almost got the ski back in the water, but... Um, you know, we'll, we'll have to take a look at that score. That'll be under review. He was, uh, he was real slow out of two. So, uh, I'm, you know, I'm not, I, I was pretty sure I saw in real time that Adam got outside of three ball. I'm not a hundred percent sure that Dane got outside three, but it, it definitely will not be enough to take the lead. Um, but we'll see if he's, uh, if he's going to be given, you know, two or two and two and a half. Handle a little close on his, uh, on his entrance gates into buoy number one. Yeah, and so you see there, like, he brings the handle to the inside of his body instead of the outside hip, which causes him to do a check. Like, right there at two, it was really bad. Nah, he got outside at three. I right. do believe I saw it. And, oh, and, uh, and he almost went an air rally on that one. Yeah, well, hopefully hopefully that didn't that didn't hurt, hurt his, uh, you know, he's probably trying to keep the handle away from his head and everything, but hopefully that didn't hurt his shoulders or anything the way it pulled. But um, take a look here at the replay one more time. You'll see he... He's going to bring this handle in one at one inside right there. Kind of got on it a little early. And then you'll really see him check it to the inside of his body, making this key check right there. Yeah. So uh, not quite rotating his hips under the line and getting outside of three, but not, not, not able to hold on. Enough for a quarter or a half? I mean, he had it and he's back, he's back around. I mean, I'd say that's a half, a half a buoy if I were, if I were calling it, um, because the ski did do a, it almost did a full it did a full 360 so he did get it to turn again okay all oh, right then confirm? yeah but the ski has to come back under the line 
Whether you hold on or not, it's the line of the boys, not how long you hold on. Two and a half. Two and a half confirmed? Yeah. Best hit. Okay, so it's a two and a half from our officials. That confirms uh, uh, Dane Meckler in second spot right now, still in the lead. Is Adam Sadomaya on three? Yeah, and you heard Rob asking the, uh, the the boat crew if it was confirmed, but uh, you know Dane got the ski outside the buoy, which gives you that quarter buoy, and then like he was saying, the ski has to come under the line, uh, which it you know the ski did, and then Dane kind of spun all the way around on his hips. So yeah, um, you know right call there from the judges getting that two and a half, and uh, you know Dane's going to be a little bit upset there, um, not getting that full three, but uh, putting himself into second right now. Um, you know, with Robert Hazelwood, who's been, you know, he's been he's been skiing consistent and uh, was looking good yesterday. So I'll, I'll look looking to see you know big things out of him. And and Tony, he's a he's another one of your skiers. So he's riding the uh, you know that that syndicate works too. Two. Yeah. So you know you've got you got a different little bit different of, of, of what's going you know what's going on. We've seen uh, you know Ali Nicholson riding the works one and Sasha riding the works one, but then you got Benny and and. Uh, and Robert are riding the works too. So okay, so uh, each of those skiers have slightly different characteristics. Uh, works too being a being a little bit uh, easier to handle at some of the uh, the, the less intense or short and line lengths. But we'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment after we uh, check in with Ali. All right, Dane. So coming up just a little bit short of that top score right now. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. The wind was really up and down throughout your set. Yeah, it, honestly, the, the wind wasn't too much of a factor. It uh, feels really good out there. I just didn't get the one I was hoping for and uh, tried to hold it together at two, but then was, you know, kind of all I had to get outside of three. So, uh, yeah, a little bit bummed, but feels great out there. And, uh, you know, the site's pretty good. It's good to be back home here, and uh, hopefully we'll be back next year. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Back to you guys. All right, echoing the, those sentiments there, we uh, we certainly appreciate uh, Lake 38, uh, Keith and Karen Alberton for uh, for having us here for this uh, for this pro am uh, presented by S Lines with the good island in play and also the dockside interviews brought to you by Stokes. Here we go, Robert Hazelwood on 12 meters. Ooh, getting getting a little deep there out of two, but. Uh... Relaxed into three and, and, and managed his way to this 35 off pass. Rob's also one of those skiers. It's got a very, very, very unique style. As you see the way he lets go of the rope and, and the way he comes back to the handle, it's uh, it's definitely uh, his, own, his own very unique look when he skis. Yeah, I'm certainly looking pretty good out there. And uh, yeah, may maybe you maybe you can explain a little bit, or or at least concur with uh, with what uh, what I'm saying so far as the syndicate is concerned. The the O1 is a little bit more aggressive towards the more extreme line lengths, uh, while sacrificing a little bit at the uh, at the uh, the earlier earlier lengths. Whereas the uh, the two uh, uh, offers offers the same level of performance towards the the higher end, but makes the easier passes the uh, the starting pass is a little easier yeah so i i, I believe the the you know the works two is going to have a little bit it's going to be a little bit wide of a wider ski so it's just it's a bigger ski which is going to make it um you know those those longer line links where, where you might not be generating as much speed the ski should you know sit higher out of the you know should 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 be more more platform for you to stand on with a little more surface area you're going to feel a little more comfortable um at a slower speed that's 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 um, to me, would be the you know the, the big 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 benefit. But you know, as these skiers go, they 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 are a little different, and so they're liking kind of what uh, you know what the skis doing. I know Rob was telling me that he he really likes what uh, what this ski does. You know, off of the second wake, um, you know, so he was he was really liking that edge change and out to the buoy um, on this ski. You know, just a little bit better, but. Um, again, it's 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 all skier preference. So uh, of course, you know just, you got you've got a little bit of everything, you know, kind of out in the mix. Um, so uh, you know that's just it's 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 what you know, they 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 pick their ski, they get on it, and uh, you know each skier is a little different. And you know again, kind of the way that maybe he moves through the turn that probably might make this ski rotate a little bit better than than the other one. Um, 
And I mean, I notice, and, and I'm looking at the track of that ski, and I mean, he sets it on an edge, and it continues to carve. I mean, there's no, there's no flattening up or going into anything like a split, a, a split radius edge change. He just sets, sets it and forgets it. Yeah, and then that's, and that's exactly, I mean, what he was saying, he was like, it, 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 when it goes from, you know, the first wake, when it makes the edge change, it, it swings out really, really well, and that was kind of what he was he was telling me that he liked it, you know a lot about it. It was it was again that that workout from wait you know the the second wake out to the buoy and uh, you know you you are seeing it. You can see it there on on the replays and stuff. And you'll see it as we as we get you know further down the line and um, and bring him back in. I believe it's 39 off down there from the far end and it'll be uh, he's gonna have that you know the wind and and it is it, it's gusty. It's just up and down so. Um, it's really important to make sure you get this this pull out for the gate and the start, um, you know, right, and then then manage your way down through the course. But here he um, comes, ten seven five needs this, and, uh, gets the first couple. He's round buoy number three. Easier off number four, round number five, and gets ten seven five to go. Yes. Yeah, and there you go. You get a little fist bump from Rob. I think you know. Again, he's uh, he's he, he's he's got a lot of confidence this season you know been skiing really really good and uh you know you're just seeing it right there with that 39 he he got a little bit shaky at the start but you know settled it down and then ended up getting back on top of the pass where he was uh you know early for six waiting on it and uh you know good good job for rob there for that you know tailwind 39 and and gonna give himself set himself up up really well for uh, a good look at 41 Absolutely, looking in good, good shape. Oh, taking a big, big old uh, chunk out of number two, but still managing to stay on the course. Pass three and number four. And just holding that angle going across course, not really trying to shoulder charge it too much, which would affect his path into, into his edge change or at least uh, affect his equilibrium. But uh, let's have a look and see what he does on 10.25 meters. More than three will uh, guarantee him a spot on the podium. All right, let's see. We got the headwind 41 here for Rob. Got to get a big one ball. He does. Let's see if he yeah, can get it. Get the two. Okay, he's oh, looking good at three. Can he turn three ball? Come on, Rob. Oh, he's gonna need to throw the ski. Oh, and he's got on round three inside buoy number four. Now, in terms of the backup, that is that is what's gonna keep him ahead of Adam Saddlemyer if it comes down to a tie break uh, between himself and Adam Saddlemyer for one of the minor places below first. Yeah, and I mean, you know, Rob is, uh, I, I think that, that, that for sure gives him third place. Um, he can get no worse than third. But, um, you know, this is kind of a, 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 a same look at 41 that he had yesterday. You know, got a, got a big one in the ski bit at two, and then he gets over here at three and just, you know, kind of gets off the handle, gets separated, and then the boat starts pulling him. And, you know, you see him right there. He's, He's happy with how he skied, but he probably knows. He's like, yeah, if I had, if I had just trusted it a little bit more, going to three and and uh, and get the pull, he might have been able to, you know, go to four, or even go further, because you know that is that uh, that onside turns over there at four. So, um, but check out this two ball, man. He Tony, he he crushes just, it right. That was oh, look perfect. At that. that was about as good as it gets for Robert Hazelwood. But you see, he gets off the handle just a little too early there and it creates that, you know, that slack in the line. He loses the pull with the boat and um, you know, like I said, he's happy. That's th that's that's no worse than third place today, but uh um, you know, I, I I bet you he is coming in thinking he left a little bit out on the water. Okay, he's uh, got third place guaranteed. Here, but he could actually ascend as high as second or win the thing. Yeah, and I think, I mean, you know, anything can happen. It's, it's, it's a slalom event. You, uh, you know, you could end up with everybody log jamming up at, at, at three and then end up with a four-way tie at three. But, you know, with these last two skiers on, I'm, I'm expecting these guys to go... Uh, to go go out and go out, go out and put up a big score. I know we heard Nate talking about possibly starting at 35 off, so we'll have to wait and get confirmation. But uh, we'll see if he's going to take that 41 head or that 41 tail. 
All right then, folks, here we go. Game on. He's looking to try and take 41 off from the opposite direction. In order to do that, he has got to start in on a later pass, and he'll be going into the course. Pass number one, 12 meters. This is Nate Smith. So now you know, here we go. We got some strategy coming into play here, Tony. Um, I think maybe he's watched these other skiers and seen that, that you know, that maybe that tailwind's not quite, um, you know, all as bad as it, as it looks from, you know, the dock. And I'm going to come in and start it at, at 35 off. So uh, take a look as he's making his way through. He's good looking opening pass here for Nate Smith. Yep. Just smooth as you like. Six buoys, 12 meters. Let's check in with Ali. Rob Hazelwood, uh, tied for the lead right now. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling fantastic. Just to have such a consistent weekend um, at this kind of part of the season at the start, like brand new ski, kind of been on it for about a month and a half. And it's just, I'm so consistent. Well, I've been so consistent. My third podium in my life and my second this season. So, yeah, I'm through the roof. Congratulations. Is that three for three? Three at 41? Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably the first time I've done that ever as well, actually. So that's, yeah, it's just great. I mean, conditions are conditions are fantastic. I was happy to get through that tailwind 39. Um, my 39s haven't felt great this weekend, so that one got me a little, got me a little nervous. But no, I'm, I'm through the roof and just excited to go to Europe now. Phenomenal skiing. Happy for you. Back to you guys. Nice interview there with uh, Ali and Robert. And you can tell that Regina Jake was, was impressed with that too. Yeah, you know, and I mean, I, I, I think everybody is, you know, Rob, Rob's come out and uh, he's found his confidence. He's, he's, he's on one and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what he's got when he goes over here to Europe. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's one of these young up and coming skiers and, uh, you know, it's really good to see him out there all smiles on the dock. So, yep, that will be, that will be a nice little boost for him as he goes to the HO photo shoot sometime over the next week. Yeah, I believe they've got that here uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week. So, uh, you know, he'll be he'll be excited with with that going going down there to uh, you know the Jackson Swiss Ski School to do that this week uh, with the HO team. All right then, and uh, let's put that to one side as we continue on with Nate Smith. He's run through 12. That was 11 behind the uh, the Nautic Red Baron. The uh, the impressive Atobo here at uh, Lake 38, uh, driven by Keith Alberton. And uh, kudos to Keith and uh, his wife Karen and uh, the rest of the organizational team here at Lake 38 for hosting this tournament, the, the 2023 Lake 38 Pro-Am, presented by S-Lines with the Good Island uh, in play and our uh, dockside interviews being brought to you by Stokes. Look at this. Wonderful skiing there from Nate Smith. 11.25 meters and always imitated, never duplicated. Yeah, it's uh, Nate's smooth, man. That 38 looked like uh, it was 35 off. I mean, if you if you hadn't told me that he had started at 12, I would have thought that he had just gone out and done like the rest of the boys. And, uh, you know, good look, good looking start there for Nate. And you're going to gonna gonna take 39 from, from the other end than all the other competitors. But... Um, I expect this to kind of look about the same as 38, but take a look as we bring him into the course. Entrance, buoy number one, gets a good snap of the handle, 10.75 meters. Yeah, not, not, not much of a difference between 38 and 39 here. Uh, Nate looking really good as he uh, runs that 39 off pass. And, uh, and, just and just seeing him bleed off that momentum going from side to side, it's an impressive, impressive thing to see. You know, from uh, from Nate Smith. I mean, right from the get-go. I mean, he just rolls in, places the handle down, holds a position, guides the ski out, drives through, and uh, does it five more times. Yeah, I mean, and Nate's like he, he's really patient. He waits on the boat, and makes sure he uh, he rotates his hips and gets his ski under the line before he even thinks about pulling. So, um, you know, that's that's what. But keeps him looking so smooth, and you know, even when he does have a bobble, you don't really notice it. And uh, you know, that's textbook skiing there for Nate. Wonderful skiing, just, just absolutely roping that pass. That's ten point seven five meters, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, I mean, as 
I mean, as you rightly mentioned, I mean, if, it, if, it, if no one had told you what that line length was, it probably would have been 11 or 12. Yeah, I mean that was that was that was smooth. There was there was really nothing in there to to, to even hint that 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 was a 39 off pass. Um, you know, a lot of these other skiers, you'll see they'll kind of get a little slow out of a turn. But uh, here we go. We'll uh, we'll bring Nate in. This is he needs more than three to to to, to take the lead. It'll be a tie with three here. Here he is, round buoy number two. He's good for three. He's gotten the lead as soon as he gets round buoy number four. Can he get it outside five? Does he make? Oh, I don't think he got round six though. Uh, again, uh, we'll have to take a look, but that was it was close. Um, you know, and then they, if he gets, if he does get the ski outside of outside of that six ball, that's going to be uh, big pressure for uh, your, your last gear of the day, uh, Freddie Winter. All right, then we're going to take a look at this for about. A little over two thirds of this pass, you could have uh, you could have easily bet that he would have run this. But at least based upon the first couple of movies, just look at that. Just just brings the ski, just brings it under the line. Then he's off to the races. A little bit of a delay there off number three, but it's nothing he hasn't handled before. Handle up a little bit high, so it, it's starting. The errors are starting to to show, and then he got down course. Yeah. He's outside it. He's outside of six, but he didn't go through the exit gate. Yeah, so that would be five, five and, a and a half. half. So, uh, so it comes down to one's ability to run, or at least almost run, 10.25 meters to determine the title. Yeah, I mean, Freddie's going to have to go out and, uh, and run it if he wants to take the win. So we see this 41 one more time. You see he gets a little bit slow out of four because he, he rushes back on the handle and then, you know, kind of loses the line. But great job for Nate getting getting the ski outside of uh, outside of six and, and, and putting the pressure on, on here, your last skier of the day. All right. So skier about to take to the water. Two-time champion here at uh, Lake 38 uh, uh, Pro-Am. Presented by S Lines, it is going to be Freddie Winter. Yeah, and Freddie, a part of that D3 water ski team, um, you know, he's uh, he's made a switch to a new ski, and he's he's looking good on it. I mean, he skied great yesterday, got himself this top seed into this event, so he's uh, going to go out and know what he needs to do. Um, we'll take a look and see. I didn't hear what the start speed was or start you know line length was. See if he if he chooses to go out like Nate or if he. Uh, if he goes like all the other guys, it takes that uh, at 41 in the headwind. But we'll take a look here as we bring him in. This is pass number one. All right, here he comes. Here comes uh, Freddie Winter. And I believe it's 32 off, thir 13 meters here for uh, for Freddie Winter here. So he's he's going to do the, the the normal ski set, I believe, unless he elects to do an opt-up down here at the end. But uh, smooth-looking opening pass there for Freddie. All right, then. So that is a Freddie Winter uh, correct in uh, getting all six buoys on the opening pass of 32 off of 30 meters. Let's check in dockside with Ali. All right. Hey, great skiing, Nate. Thank you. You ran it there. Could took it from the other direction, like that direction a little bit more. Yeah. I've, I mean, what's the definition of insanity? Trying the same thing over and over again and getting the same results. So I wanted to try it from the other end. And it seemed to be a little bit better. But I guess I need to work on S turning six ball. Never tried that before. That's a, definitely a different one to, to try. I thought you were in it, got a little pulled out going to six, but, you know, able to get outside six, got that five and a half, so now Freddie's going to have to get all six. Yeah, I'm happy with it. I mean, both rounds were good. This round was good for me today, and um, if Freddie goes out there and beats it, then good on him. That's great skiing. If not, then um, I'm, I'm happy. So. Well, hey, great skiing. Thanks. Back to you guys. And as a matter of fact, that, uh, that last set there from Nate Smith is only the fifth time that he's skied in the past week. He's uh, been, uh, been quite busy with, his, uh, with the professional side of his life, uh, which, uh, which consists of being uh, an, a, an aviation instructor uh, out of the Orlando Executive Airport. So wishing the best of luck uh, continuing on with that. But uh, obviously a little bit of a time off the water that he'd rather not have. But... We'll see if five and a half holds up against Freddie Winter, who is on 12 meters right now. Yeah, and I, uh, look at this beautiful drone shot there from, uh, you know, way up high in the sky. And you see that nice, smooth-looking, um, 
you know, 12 meter pass there for Freddie. All right, uh, good stuff there from uh, from Freddie Winter. All right, so uh, Keith Olberton. So uh, Keith Olberton there at the helm of that uh, Red Baron towboat at the uh, the uh, the home dock. Temperature there, about 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Wind a little up and down, a five mile an hour headwind for uh, for the uh, for the odd numbered uh, passes, including this one coming up. 11.25 meters is next, and it's going to uh, belong to Freddie Winter. So. On top of the water and round the good island, this is Freddie Winter. Boat speed accelerating up to 58k or 36 miles an hour. Good shot there. Round buoy number one. 11.25 meters. Pass that he's run on so many occasions, but he can't afford to be complacent to one iota and gets around all six buoys. Wonderful stuff there from Freddie Winter as he gets ready for the ever critical 10.75 meters. Yeah, and I mean, and Freddie's still, uh, still, still warming up here. Um, you know, I, I, I think this pass, you know, he, he's one of these guys that, that, that can run that 41, so I would say this 38 off pass is still a walk in the park for him. Um, still filling out the boat. Filling out the ski, filling out the water, making sure everything's dialed. But um, you know, I, I'll, I reckon he's going to come in and uh, and put down put down one good thirty nine here, and and really be looking forward to uh, taking a shot at the lead. All right, then, excellent stuff. And uh, I'm Tony Lightfoot, and uh, right here at the announcing uh, spot here with me is Zane Nicholson, who is proudly modeling the uh, the Chow for Now uh, uh, signature T-shirt, uh, courtesy of TWBC, which you can uh, purchase from the uh, the shop, waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash shop. Purchase your TWBC swag there, including the brand new limited edition Chow for Now T-shirt. Yeah, and I mean, uh, great, great T-shirts, uh, solid fits, and um, you know, comfy stuff. I think, I think so sooner or later, my my closet will only consist of uh, of water ski uh, broadcasting company shirts. But uh, um, I, I am a big fan of this Chow for Now shirt. Indeed, indeed, and I certainly appreciate that. Here we go. This is ten point seven five meters, and this is Freddie Winter entrance gates. Good extension on number one, round number two. On a ski that he's only been on for nearly a month, this is a Freddie Winter on buoy number four. Takes it to go on buoy number five. Round number six, he gets through 10.75 meters, but the task is by no means finished quite yet because he's got 10.25 meters coming up next and needs to effectively run that pass in order to take the win. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it, 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 it's going to be tough. He's going to have to get outside of, outside of six if he's going to want to tie, but... Uh... You know, Freddie's here. He he can run this 41 off pass, so he's going to be looking to uh, to run it. That was a, a pretty smooth looking 39. Um, gets a little. I believe he got a little deep here, um, but you know that's that's nothing for Freddie. And then um, you know he's he's managing it now, kind of checking speed, and then he gets back into it here at four ball. But uh, good looking 39 there for for Freddie. And um, you know, it's like the, the wind, the wind right now, he must be living right because it seems to be dying down, um, you know, just just laying off for him. So he's probably going to have it about flat calm out there. Just a little bit of texture for him. All right, then getting ready to go. 10.25 meters. The scores that we've seen on this pass have been along the lines of half at 10.25 meters from Benjamin Stadelbauer. Three at 10.25 from Adam Sattermeyer alongside uh, uh, Rob, Robert Hazelwood. Dane Meckler with two and a half. Nate Smith with three and a half. Uh, five and a half, I beg your pardon. Here we go. This is Freddie Winter needs to run this pass. Here he goes. Round buoy number one. Gets it to go. He's a little bit delayed off number one, but he's good to go around number two. He's a little late off number three. He stalls up for the wakes. Settles for three, 
And ladies and gentlemen, that therefore means that with a score of five and a half, at 10.25 meters, your champion of the 2023 Lake 38 Pro-Am presented by S-Lines is Nate Smith. Let's take a look at this attempt here, courtesy of Freddie Winter. Yeah, I think kind of. I think Freddie kind of knew he was in a little bit of trouble there. He was, he was, you know, really leaning on the boat, trying to keep the rope tight at the gate, and uh, I don't think he ever really got free of the boat. And I think that kind of caught him there on his, uh, you know, one and two. And um, unfortunately for there, not going to be able to get down that pass. And, um, you know, big congrats to Nate. That, you know, that's good, it's good skiing, you know, all, all but running that 41 off pass. And, um, you know, and, and then the other thing is that Tony had played off. He The only the only skier to, uh, to try that 41 in, in the tailwind. And it actually, you know, he, he got fur the furthest down it. So, so good. Great strategy move there for Nate. All right, then. Let's check in with uh, with Ali Nicholson. Right here with uh, Nate Smith, our new champion, third time uh, champion here at Lake 38, I believe. So congratulations. Yeah, I think so. Thank you. Um, just happy to come up here and have Keith and Karen put on such a great event every year. And um, you know, a little challenging the first two rounds, was able to put it together there in the last round. Keeping the streak alive. Trying to. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Back to you guys. All right, then. Epic stuff there from, uh, from Nate Smith uh, winning his uh, latest title here at the Lake 38 uh, Pro-Am presented by, uh, by S-Lines. There is the podium. Uh, Nate Smith ahead of uh, Freddie Winter, ahead of Robert Hazelwood. So D3, D3, and syndicates there. One, two, and three. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're, you're, you're seeing both, both, both those, two, uh, those two ski companies are, are, are leading up. And as we take a look at the leaderboard there, but, um, you know, big score out of Nate. He is, he, he's on. He's been having uh, one heck of a season, you know, getting that Masters title and, um, you know, then coming and winning this and, um, you know, he's, he's, he's off to a start and, um, you know, great. Yep. So, so here we go. Let's have a look here at the brand leaderboard D three out into a pretty substantial lead now on 207 points. Syndicate dropped back to second spot on 176. Good on 156. Raider on 148. La Pointe are on nine points, and uh, Connolly is still yet to get some points on the board in the TWBC-sponsored brand leaderboard on the Water Ski Pro Tour. Here's the Water Ski Pro Tour standings as it stands right now. Nate Smith way out in the head with 120 points. Freddie Winter on 87 points. Uh, Robert Hayeswood on 64, R R Will Ash on 57, Dave Meckler on 30. That represents your top five, starting off in sixth place. We've got Thomas DeGasprey on 25, Adam Saddlemeyer on 19 points, Robert, Robert uh, Pagosi on 17, on ninth spot, Stephen Nevue on 14, uh, Benjamin Stadelbauer on 9, Charlie Ross on 9, and John Travers also on 9. All right, then. So in a few minutes, we are going to have the award presentations, uh, not only for the uh, for the actual uh, competition itself in the women's slalom and men's slalom, but also for uh, the presentation of the uh, the skier of the day award. And we'll also get uh, the name of the person who won the uh, the audience prize based upon the uh, the men's slalom competition, uh, guessing accurately the the top three and also getting as closest to the uh, the best score as possible. All of that to come in the next few minutes right here at the 2023 Lake 38 Pro-Am presented to you by S-Lines. For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality.
What if I told you there was a place, a place where the sounds of nature are only broken by the roar of a boat, a place where that summer feeling lasts all year long, a place where the Florida sun is only outshined by the smiles of the skiers, a place where first-time skiers can ski alongside world champions and the world-class coaches work with all levels of skiers. What if I told you there was a place where life slows down and your only job is to make lifelong memories? That place is Swiss Water Ski Resort. Book your trip at SwissWaterSkiResort.com. For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality.
I'm involved with the Flowpoint Method because I think it's a really strong program. We've been working on a couple things and it's just fine tuning and I want to be able to make sure that I can do those movements no matter where I am so I can feel confident skiing at any site. It's just really all encompassing and I think that's really beneficial. It's very helpful to like keep on those keys and have a support team behind you that you can ask questions to and are there for every step of the way. My name is Thomas de Gasperi. I'm from Italy. I'm a two-time World Slalom champion. I've been coming here at La Guapa for four years now. What I really love about this place is that we get a chance to ski in a big natural lake right behind me with a perfect course. Also, we have a chance to go 10 minutes away to a perfect man-made lake where conditions are always perfect. The boat, the drivers are always top level. The weather is always perfect. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon and welcome to the prize uh, presentation ceremonies here at the 2023 Lake 38 Pro-Am presented by S-Lines. All right, before we actually go into the prize presentations uh, proper, let's take a step into the virtual world by telling you that the women's audience prize goes to Leona Abbey of the United States. She wins herself a Conley ski. And the men's audience prize winner is Katie Hart, also from the United States. She wins herself a D3 science gear. So let's give those uh, two individuals a big cheer. All right, so let's go into the awards, uh, award presentations uh, uh, proper. Uh, just just before we do, let me uh, let me at least uh, give a big shout out to Good for sponsoring the uh, the Turn Island, and uh, and also to to Stokes for uh, for providing us with the starting dock. We thank those very, much, very indeed. much indeed, and indeed, and indeed the biggest cheer of all should go to our presentation sponsor, Steve Sedgley from S Lines. Give us a give him a big cheer. All right, ladies and gentlemen. In the women's podium, in fifth spot, with her score of two at 10.75 meters, it is going to be Luisa Jaramillo. She'll be awarded a check from Keith Alberton, and Steve Sedgley will provide the points on the Water Ski Pro Tour, which amounts to 13 points. All right then, folks. In fourth spot, with two and a quarter at 10.75 meters, it is Chelsea Mills. Chelsea Mills gets the check. And Steve presents her with the Pro Tour point, which in this instance for Chelsea Mills is 17 points. All right, top three. In fourth spot, with four at 10.75 meters, Ali Nicholson. She receives the check from Keith, the points from Steve, and the skier of the day from me. No way. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Ali Nicholson, your skier of the day with 43% of the vote. Ladies and gentlemen, top two, 
Runner up with a score of one and a quarter at 10.25 meters, Regina Jakewurst. All right, and Regina receives 27 Water Ski Pro Tour points. And the winner, with a score of two at 10.25 meters, none other than Whitney mcclintock Reene. Right, the winner of the 2023 edition of the Lake 38 Pro-Am, presented by S-Lines. And I'm sure you've got a word or two to say, or what, would you rather have Zane do all the talking? Hey, I just want to thank Keith and Karen for having us here, and all the organizers um, for everything that you've done to make this thing possible this weekend. Um, we're super excited to come back year after year, and honestly... It just keeps getting better. It felt amazing out there, and the scores really showed. Um, these girls skied great, and I'm super proud to come out on top. Um, thankful for Nautique Boats for having the best boat in the industry and Radar for being there under my feet. So I'm super proud of everything that um, is going on this year, and I'm super proud of the – I'm super excited for the season ahead. So um, glory to God for, for this win. Thank you, guys. And say, say thank you. Thank you. I just want to yeah, but yeah. Yeah, just by, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for our podium placement skiers. Luisa Jaramillo, Chelsea Mills, Ali Nicholson, Regina Jaquist, and your winner, Whitney mcclintock Reeney. Ladies, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, you got to love him. All right, then. So, we go on to the, uh, the men's podium. Uh, the, uh, the award presentations, once again, will be conducted by Keith Orberton and Scott Sedgley. Just want to... Yes, indeed. Yeah, just wanted to correct me on that one. It's been a long day. It has been a long day, and this guy and this guy has been really been really been working his tail off to make sure that we've got the best lines out there possible, not only for this tournament but for a whole bunch of other tournaments across the world. So let's give him a big cheer once again, Scott Sedgley, the title sponsor here of this event. All right then, folks. In fifth spot in the men's competition with two and a half at ten point two five meters, forty one off. Dane Mackler. And for his efforts, he gets 13 Pro Tour points. All right, then. In fourth spot, we have a score of three at 10.25 meters. The Sledge, Adam Sadomaya. <laughs> Gets the fourth place prize money. And how many points do you get? 17, isn't that right? There you go. There you go. All right, top three in third spot. Also... With three at 10.25 meters, 41 off, Robert Hazelwood. <laughs> Robert, was, Robert receives the money there from Keith Orberton. And Scott Sedgley presents him with 22 points on the Water Ski Pro Tour. All right. Runner-up with a score of three at 10.25 metres from the London Borough of Wandsworth. It is Freddie Winter. <laughs> he 
He receives the runner-up check. And he receives points for the Water Ski Pro Tour to the tune of 27 points, leaving us with our champion with a score of 5.5 at 10.25 metres, the winner of the 2023 Lake 38 Pro-Am presented by S-Lines, Nate Smith. Receiving the prize money from Keith, the S-Line and the 34 Water Ski Pro Tour points from Scott. And you get a microphone from me. How about that? Yeah, you want one? Thanks, Tony. Uh, I just want to thank um, Keith and Karen for putting this event on every year. We always come up here and come in the gate. It's just such a great event and great venue for us to be here. And all the sponsors that put up the money for this tournament. So um, it was a fun weekend. Looking to come back next year. Thank you, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you your award recipients, Dane Mackler, Adam Saddlemeyer, Robert Hazelwood, Freddie Winter, and your champion, Nate Smith. Give him a big cheer once again. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that brings to a conclusion the 2023 edition of the Lake 38 Pro-Am presented by S-Lines. Thank you once again. Uh, you've been a great audience. You've been, you stuck with us through thick and thin, and we certainly appreciate your participation. Stand by, because the, uh, the next piece of uh, footage that you'll see will tell you exactly where we'll be going next. We'll be going outside the United States. We'll be heading to Mexico for the next TWBC Broadcasting Competition. But until then, it is from me, Tony Lightfoot. Ciao for now. Thank you.